Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Satellite images reportedly now show Russian forces moving closer to the capital city of Kyiv. What that means in the fight for Ukraine forces and what U.S. officials now fear. And back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Oh my goodness, 29 degrees to start your Saturday morning. Are we going to see the temps warm up throughout the day, throughout the weekend? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It good is 6 o'clock this Saturday, March 12th. <laughs> you guys were just on spring break. Yes, yes, and coming off a Spurs win. Mm -hmm. We got to go to the game. Feel very lucky All for right, that. All right, so so give me like the last 10 seconds, a little play-by-play. -play. When you won, how'd you react? <laughs> uh, of course, well, I was super excited. I mean, I was screaming like everybody else. But I think I was the only one who wasn't cheering before mm -hmm. because the Spurs were ahead. And I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> For those who don't know, last night's win made Coach Pop the all-time most winningest NBA head coach. We're going to have so much more on that throughout the morning. But for now, Sarah Spivey, 29 degrees. Good morning. Cold. Good morning, Steph. Happy to have you here Saturday <laughs> morning. Here. Uh, you know, uh, very cold. In fact, this is the latest freeze we've had since 2006. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, so it's cold out there. It's below freezing just about everywhere across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Take a look at these metro temperatures this morning. 25 in Bernie Sage Airfield, 23 in Bandera, 21 in Kerrville, 21 in Comfort, 23 in Hondo, 28 at JBSA Randolph, and 28 in Pleasanton. Now, in spite of the cold start this morning, it's going to be a pleasant day. A cool day, with but with plenty of sunshine, will warm up to uh, 58 degrees this afternoon. And by tomorrow morning, we are anticipating another freeze. Temperatures will fall to below freezing early tomorrow morning. Reminder. We lose an hour tonight. We spring forward. The clocks move forward an hour. So we'll have a freezing start tomorrow in the morning, but a nice afternoon. Some nearly 10 degrees warmer will be in the mid to upper 60s on Sunday. Hey, if you are celebrating spring break in the week ahead, it's going to be much more spring like this week than last week. I've got to look at those temperatures coming up in just a bit. Steph, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories this morning, a man killed outside his home earlier this week on the northwest side has been identified. According to officials at Great Hearts Forest Heights, the man was 23-year-old Michael Eganese. He was an elementary school teacher. Parents and students were notified of his death in an email that was sent out. Eganese was killed in a parking lot outside of his home, and police say it looked like he was trying to get into his vehicle. Witnesses say they saw a man in a blue hoodie running from that area. As of now, no one has been arrested. San Antonio police also looking for answers after a body was found on the city's west side. So this was a scene yesterday at an apartment complex. This is the 2600 block of Westward Drive that's near West Military. Officers, they tell us that they have very little info to go on right now. We are still waiting to learn how exactly the person died. Investigators were going to figure out if this was actually the original crime scene or if the body was dumped here. We're going to be staying on top of this story throughout the weekend. We're going to have any and all updates once they become more available. All right, so families living in the Tobin Hill community, they're fed up with the trash on the road, the loud music, and of course, the crime. And they say the root of all of it are the businesses that cater to nightlife. In an effort to coexist, businesses and homeowners are trying to find a compromise. However, will it work? The city is ready to give it a try in the next few weeks. Patty Santos reports. At all times during the day, you'll see neighbors walking, neighbors jogging. But starting around 10 p.m., Vanessa Sandoval says nightlife on St. Mary's Street transforms the Tobin Hill community. And some people start what we call pre-gaming, you know, drinking in their cars. And it goes on till bars close on the weekends. I've heard everything from people fighting outside my window, um, challenging each other outside my window. I've heard people vomiting outside my window. Don Hauser complains of parking, trash, and even crime. His tires, he says, have been slashed three different times outside his home. Now I have to park down at the Pearl and walk. It's like a 15 minute walk. Uh, but a solution might be near. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo has been working with residents and business owners to keep the peace. The bar owners are, are pledging to do a better job of hiring staff to be able to pick up the trash every every night. They've also agreed to all pay into a fund to hire more uh, off-duty police officers. He says most bar owners have signed a voluntary pledge to adjust drink prices, reduce happy hour times, and increase entry age. They also support parking limitations in the neighborhood. In some streets that could be eliminating parking on the streets, on other streets it could be residential only parking during evening hours. 
noise complaint solutions are also in the works. The city's noise ordinance pilot program records at least 40 complaints to the area since October. The city hired an Austin consultant to shape a new noise ordinance. That is definitely going to be a target area. Yeah. All right, so that was Patty Santos reporting. As for Councilman Bravo, he says businesses and people living in the area, they're going to be discussing these proposed changes in an upcoming meeting set for next Thursday. You're going to read more about this parking study they discussed and when the expected changes could go into effect right now. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, now to the latest in Russia's war on Ukraine. New evidence that the Russians are repositioning their forces to encircle the Ukraine capital of Kyiv. This comes amid heightened concerns that Russia could stage a chemical weapons attack to escalate the war even more. President Joe Biden issuing a strong warning saying there will be a severe price if chemical weapons are used. ABC's Morgan Norwood has a story. Russia's attacks on Ukrainian cities and civilian areas unrelenting in Mariupol, the city where a children's and maternity hospital was hit earlier, now seeing more bombardment with reports of shelling every half hour. The mayor of Mariupol describing the siege as Armageddon. The situation is awful. Uh, Russian army continues to do airstrikes, air bombing artillery shelling. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky posting this address to Instagram saying the mayor of Melitopol was kidnapped, saying the actions of Russian invaders will be equated with those of, quote, ISIS terrorists. All of this while the huge column of Russian tanks that had been stalled for over a week outside of Kyiv now on the move again. New satellite images show the Russian convoy that once spanned 40 miles is now as close as nine miles from the city center. And we do assess that the Russians are are uh, beginning to make more momentum on the ground towards Kyiv. Despite the critical situation in many parts of the country, there are ominous warnings today of how much worse it could get. A U.S. senior official saying Russian forces are bringing in hazmat suits amid fears Russia might stage a chemical weapons attack in the country and blame it on Ukraine and the U.S. The president saying Russia would pay a, quote, severe price, but wouldn't say what that cost would be, continuing to emphasize that U.S. troops will not engage with Russian forces in Ukraine. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And other morning headlines here at home, a baby dead and three others in the hospital after a suspected carbon monoxide poisoning. So firefighters in St. Louis responding to a call yesterday morning about four people unconscious in a car. When they arrived, they found the four people unresponsive. First responders stated that there was a strong odor of exhaust fumes when they opened the vehicle's doors. All four people, an eight-year-old girl, a nine-year-old girl, a 28-year-old woman, and the infant taken to the hospital. That infant later died. The other three are now in serious condition. Police there in St. Louis asking people who don't have shelter to go to warming centers. Do not sleep in your vehicle. A massive fire engulfs a downtown 25-story residential high-rise building in Dallas. So this is a manor house, and firefighters initially on the scene battling the blaze had to request for backup. Most of the residents were able to get out before the crews arrived. It took them about an hour to knock out the flames. They say they were able to contain the fire damage to the room where they believe the fire began. Nobody was injured. Investigators are working to determine the cause of that fire. So Gabby Petito's story made national headlines. We discussed it extensively. Now her family suing the parents of former boyfriend Brian Laundry. Gabby Petito's parents claim that Christopher and Roberta Laundry knew that their son murdered Gabby and that they were allegedly helping Brian Laundry get out of the country. Remember, Petito disappeared last summer during a cross country trip with Laundry. Laundry returned home to Florida. He then would was disappearing. All right, both of their bodies later found a coroner ruling Petito's cause of death as strangulation. Laundry died by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. In the lawsuit, Gabby's parents allege Brian Laundry told his parents about killing Gabby. And do you want to be a part of the porch parade? One of the Fiesta's newest events has neighbors creating colorful displays outside their homes, businesses, and schools. So we're just days away from that deadline to join the contest. All you have to do is take a picture of your creation and submit it on our website at kset.com by March 16th. That's this week. We have a list of the prize packages up for grabs on kset.com. Do you guys decorate? <laughs> no, not not to that extent. Okay. We really need to. I you mean, you still have time. I I don't. I mean, I don't know. I would need my mom on board to do most of the work. She's the creative one. My my mom and my daughter. We're gonna be talking about moms in a couple minutes. Okay. So get Keep ready. Keep that in mind. All right. Just about 610, 29 degrees out. Coach Pop.
Cup is now <laughs> in the NBA history book as the winningest coach in league history. A look at the Spurs' dramatic finish against the Jazz that made it happen. All right, and here you go. We all know Mother's Day is in May, but there is a special way to appreciate your mom. We're going to explain in just a bit. Mm -hmm. You should appreciate your mom every day. That's a great point. Just saying. Taking a look outside with live cam. Very cold out there. 29 degrees. It does not feel like spring break, although a lot of people will start that this weekend. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 613. Today is a good practice for Mother's Day in May. So today is National Working Moms Day. All right, so we have to recognize that every mom is a working mom. And moms are everything from breadwinners to bread makers, educators, and of course, role models. Some moms work in and out of the home. I can't even imagine balancing a career and motherhood. And just like Max said, other moms might be called stay-at-home moms, but guaranteed she's still a working mom taking care of the kids at home. So take a moment to appreciate a special mom in your life. And if you're a mom, make sure to treat yourself. I got to say, you were like MVP mom this week, Aww. spring break. You guys <laughs> went to the Spurs game last yes. night. And uh, I mean, your daughter's going to forever remember she was at like a historic game. Yeah, she was very excited. I mean, and then, you know, my husband was telling her, hey, you know, we're watching history. You know, wow. history is being made right now. And I mean, she was, you know, just over the moon to be there with all the excitement of the game. Did you find yourself having to find different activities to do because the weather was kind of all over the place? Well, uh, I guess I got lucky because I signed up in advance. I, she was in Spurs camp oh. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So she was indoors when it was cold. Uh, and able to go outside when it was warm. Exactly. Well, you know, half of San Antonio was on spring break. The other half mm -hmm. is on spring break this, this week. week. And this week is going to be much more spring-like. But outside right now it's cold it's freezing in fact literally it's 29 degrees outside right now with a wind chill of 24. now this is our latest freeze in the season since 2006 so yes this is a late freeze and guess what we're going to have another freeze early tomorrow morning. Temperatures won't be as cold as they are right now, but still keep those plants in for another night. Keep them covered for another night. 22 in Bandera, 25 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 27 in Castroville. It's 27 in New Braunfels, 29 at the airport, 28 at JBSA Randolph, 28 in Pleasanton, 32 in Del Rio. So everyone across the KSAT 12 viewing area, with the exception of Catula, is well below freezing this morning, even up in Arizona, it's in the teens. So very impressive what we call radiational cooling in the overnight hours with clear skies, calmer winds. All that heat is able to escape out into space, and that's why we're seeing a morning freeze this morning. But in the future cast, a total sunshine. So in spite of the cold start, we're going to warm up really efficiently today. We'll be looking at an afternoon high near 60 degrees around the metro area, upper 50s in the hill country. And out west toward Del Rio, the mid 60s is a good bet. So again, quite an impressive warm up because of uh, the sunshine and a very dry atmosphere in place. Dew points are in the teens out there right now, a 14 degree dew point, and they're expected to go down even more, almost to the bottom of our scale here, bone dry outside. Not only are you going to want that chapstick, but you know, I'm somebody that always tends to attract static electricity, and especially when it's dry outside, we can uh, see uh, electricity conducted more easily. And so that's why today we're going to have uh, an ouch on the static shock forecast because it's about as high as it can go. So I wouldn't be surprised if as you're reaching for the car doorknob, you'll see some static electricity. But today, as I mentioned, going to be cool but pleasant outside. Plenty of sun at 10 will be at 43 noon, 50 degrees and then 58 for the high temperature in San Antonio. Winds light and variable. Hey, the sun is going to set tonight at uh, 641, but remember, we lose an hour of sleep uh, overnight, and so tomorrow the sunset will be 7.41 p.m., so keep that in mind. All right, chilly this evening. Don't 
leave the house without the jacket tonight because much like uh, I was saying that we warm up really quickly, we're going to cool down very quickly tonight too. Temperatures will be in the low 40s by 10 p.m. On the satellite and radar, a really dynamic system off to our east. This is that same system that brought us the cold front yesterday. It's producing a lot of snow across the Appalachian Mountains and even a tornado watch across parts of Florida. This is that system that brought us that cold front, but in its wake we're seeing high pressure settle over Texas. High means dry and so that's why tonight we're going to see another freeze. Temperatures should bottom out right near 30 degrees around San Antonio. So as I mentioned, keep those plants inside for another night. I think we'll stay above freezing though out toward Del Rio, but still around the San Antonio metro area we're going to be seeing another freeze, but even warmer tomorrow afternoon with a high temperature in the mid to upper 60s. Hey, look at Monday. We get up to 80 degrees on Monday, and even that cold front that moves through Tuesday morning is only going to cool us down by a few degrees and keep the humidity low. So this is what I mean. Next week, a great week for those who are enjoying spring break with highs in the 70s and even in the low 80s toward the end of the week. The one thing that's missing from this forecast that we need rain. There is no rain in the forecast over the next seven days, at least no significant rain here in San Antonio. Well, maybe later. Perhaps, later. but I'll be later honest, later. it's even looking fairly dry toward the, the latter half of March as well. Uh, oh, goodness. Well, we'll keep yeah. an eye on that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 619, 29 degrees out. The Spurs snap their losing streak and help Coach Pop achieve an NBA record. And Stephanie Serna and the family in attendance. <laughs> yeah, we're so lucky. You're going to post some of those uh, videos of your daughters dancing with coyotes. Yeah. Adorable. Had a great time. All right, let's take a look at those louder numbers. Pick three, zero, two, five, fireball six, daily four, zero, two, three, four, fireball one. Cash five, two, 16, 18, 33, 35. And your Mega Millions, 24, 28, 39, 44, 66, Mega Ball 25, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Good morning. Welcome back. And go Spurs go. If you're a Spurs fan, you already know. Last night, history in the making. Coach Greg Popovich becoming the NBA's all-time winningest head coach in NBA history. And... He didn't do so in an easy fashion, a hard-fought battle against the Jazz. Let's roll the highlights. Here we go. Early on, Spurs actually fell behind by nine. They started chipping away the lead. Zach Collins straight away three, cuts the lead down to five. Two seconds left in the first. DeJounte launching a half-court buzzer. Logo DeJounte. It's good. Spurs down by three. Spurs starting to gel. Devin DeSell driving to the paint, puts it up and in. Tying the game. Spurs pushing the pace. Murray, Keldon Johnson, who is so ecstatic for Pop. Bucket Spurs going on a 9-0 run. The Jazz would come back. Former Wagner Thunderbird Jordan Clarkson knocking down the short jumper. Part of an 18-4 run to lead by nine at half. So we go to the second half. Josh Richardson, one of the new Spurs. Look at that. Cross and bang. Dunk. Love it. Part of an 8-0 run, cutting lead to three. The Spurs, who are 0-33 when trailing from behind. They go into the fourth, down by 10. Spurs would go down by 15 before Lonnie Walker, cutting the lead to two, connects on a three, and score 82-80. Murray making the jumper from the elbow, and there was Jacopoto putting the Spurs up by three with a jumper in the lane 31 seconds ago when it counted the most. Spurs hit their free throws, and they go on to win. Look at that, 104-102. to 102. Pop getting number 1,336 win. Obviously, the team could not be more happy. May have celebrated their win over Utah and Coach Pop's record, but onward and upward. Focus now is on the next game. Yes, they got to take on the Indiana Pacers tonight, again here at home. Tip-off set for 7.30. It's just a, a testament to a whole lot of people. Uh, something like this does not belong to one individual. Uh, you know, basketball is a team sport. And, uh, you know, you preach to your players that they have to do it together. And that's certainly been uh, the case in, in my life. This is so cool. Now, our uh, sideline correspondent, 
<laughs> Stephanie Stern at the game last night. So what was the vibe? What was the atmosphere in the room? Uh, you know, I you could kind of I don't know I don't know if say it was quiet, but you could kind of tell like people were like, uh, you a little know, on like, edge. Yeah, like towards the beginning of the fourth. But um, you know, once they started coming back, you know, there's so much excitement. Of course, I'm I'm one of those I guess a wimpy fan. No, 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 no. <laughs> cautious, optimistic fan. Uh, yes, I, so people are cheering because the Spurs were ahead, but I'm there like, oh my gosh. Yeah, you know? and the Jazz aren't like a bad team. Like that no. wasn't a locked in win. No, not at all. So it was, you know, even sweeter at the end. Absolutely. Congrats all the Spurs. Yes. Congrats, Coach Pop. And uh, onward, upward, we'll see the Pacers tonight here at home. Yes. Time now, 626, 29 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. And the South by Southwest Conference is underway in Austin. Why this year is a little more special than the previous years. And welcome back at 629 Austin, Texas is buzzing with directors, producers, script writers as the city hosts the 2022 South by Southwest Conference. Film and digital media buffs are gathering for the kickoff festival. Opening night was held at Paramount Theater for the film side of the event. So the South by Southwest Director of Film Festival Programming says this year will likely be an emotional one for both filmmakers and audiences as it returns in person. I Look, I'm just saying, the sun is shining in San Antonio. There's no reason to go to Austin, but that's just me. <laughs> Time now, just about 6.30, 29 degrees out. And this weekend, we are losing an uh, hour of sleep. Oh, yeah, because of daylight saving time. So still ahead on GMSA, what tips that can make the time change a little more bearable? Is it possible? All right, and a crazy story. A family able to escape a house fire on the city's northwest side. We have what happened and what comes next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday, 630 this morning, March 12th. We know a lot of people just had spring break. We know a lot of people are starting their spring break today. I know. What a, what a difference. So we had spring break mm -hmm. last week uh, and it was kind of cold and then it was nice and then it was cold. <laughs> but this week I think it's going to be better. Sarah Spivey, yeah, break better, it down. Better meaning 70s and 80s this week. Ooh, so a lot perfect. more spring-like for those enjoying spring break. But for now, though, this morning, very cold. Outside, it's 29 degrees as we're seeing the first light of the day. Our latest freeze since 2006. It's 21 in Kerrville, 23 in Hondo, 28 in Uvalde, and 32 in Del Rio. By the way, it's not out of the ordinary for the Hill Country to see freezes this late in the season. Their average last freeze is toward the end of March, but it is unusual for us to see a freeze this late in the season here in San Antonio. Again, the first time we've been seeing a freeze this late since 2006. But because we're going to see total sunshine today, it is going to be a nice day, although a little on the cool side. We'll be at 50 degrees at noon and 58 in the afternoon for the high with plenty of sunshine, light and variable winds. We've been mentioning that it's spring break, and if you're planning on traveling across the state of Texas, weather looks great today and by tomorrow morning it looks nice too. Just a chilly start in the morning hours and then even nicer tomorrow. A bit of a wind uh, up in the panhandle, but otherwise really nice traveling weather across the state of Texas if you're hitting the roads. We were talking briefly about how we really haven't seen all that much rain. Uh, over the last several days coming up in the forecast, I'm going to have an updated look at that drought monitor and whether or not we have any rain in our forecast over the next seven days. Stephanie Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a fire destroyed the roof of a family's northwest side house. Fire crews were called out around 8 last night to this home on Quinton Drive that's close to Jefferson High School. They say they saw a fire in the attic. The family was able to get out safely. Now, officials tell us the fire started in the attic, but they're not sure what sparked the flames. They say the family was using the fireplace at the time, but it's not clear if that is what caused that fire or if it was something else. Crews had a difficult time putting the fire out because of the strong winds and because the home's roof had two layers and add-ons. They were eventually able to put the fire out, but it completely burned that roof. Today marks the one year anniversary of the murder of a 21 year old man in shirts Now the investigation continues, but police and crime stoppers are now asking for your help trying to figure out what exactly happened. So shirts police tell us 21 year old Jared Jeffrey was shot and killed at the Sycamore Creek Apartments back on March 12th of last year. They say Jeffrey was found with multiple gunshot wounds in the driver's seat of a silver Mercedes sedan. Witnesses tell authorities that the man was seen speaking with Jeffrey before any shooting took place. So if you have any information, you are asked to call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 877-403-8477.
And top stories this morning, a state contracted facility called the Refuge in Bastrop County is now being investigated for sex trafficking. That facility was supposed to protect girls from that very thing. In January, a girl said an employee sold nude pictures of her and another child living at that facility. She claims the employee used the proceeds to buy drugs and alcohol for other minors. In another incident, staff members are accused of helping two girls run away from the property. Administrators at the refuge are now said to be re-evaluating its personnel. And gas prices are at an all-time high and we're making adjustments to keep riding around and something else we're all doing, keeping an eye on cheap gas. So right now, we all would like to settle for the best price on KSET.com. You can find a link that takes you to a list of gas stations with the 10 lowest prices per gallon. And you can find a map of that show, showing the gas prices from across the city. Plus, KSET consumer Marilyn Moritz talked about uh, some of the car experts and talks with them and shares how you can stretch your gas and dollar. And you can find this all on our website at KSET.com. Stephanie was just saying we are seeing record gas prices. We're also seeing the highest levels of inflation in 40 years. There's a lot of questions that have a, a lot of direct impacts on our families across the country and across our community. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading Essay at 8 a.m., a specialist with Victory Capital is joining us to discuss what led us here to this situation with gas prices and inflation. What do these numbers actually mean for you and your family? And what comes next? So if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow at 8 a.m. Time now, just about 638, 0.9 degrees now. And we're going to take you to the Pearl in oh. Texas Eats today for a taste of the Caribbean. Looks good. I'm hungry already. I know. Me too. <laughs> All right. So still ahead, how not to lose, your, lose the spring in your step. Some tips on how you can help your body cope with daylight saving time. Also, saving. Yeah. Because a lot, I used to say savings time. Oh, I saving did. Saving time. I did for years. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, now we know. Now we know. <laughs> Either way, we don't like it. No. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, it's 29 degrees right now. Very cold, but luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. 641 this morning. So it is time to warn you. You have to get ready for spring forward. Daylight saving time begins tomorrow, 2 a.m. So as we lose an hour of sleep that night, the debate rages on should or shouldn't we keep it? I don't know why we're doing it. I'd say do the same all year round if other states are doing it. I would prefer they pick one time and stay with it. All right, so here we go. As you just saw on your screen, the correct phrase is daylight saving time. There's no S. There's not multiple savings. It's just one saving, apparently. So who came <laughs> up with the concept anyway? So the answer, Germany. Uh -huh. It became the first country to enact daylight saving time. Now 70 countries use it. So does it really impact our health and well-being? Numerous studies show the extra hour of sleep we lose by springing ahead causes, get this, a 24% increased risk of heart attack, as well as an increased risk of stroke and seasonal depression. Researchers have also reported a 6% increase in traffic crashes and workplace injuries associated with daylight saving time switches. Experts say that leading up to daylight saving time, you can protect your circadian rhythm, I think I said that right, by going to bed an hour earlier than normal, the few days leading up to it, well, you kind of missed that opportunity. Also, for one to two days leading up to the switch, get outside in the morning, more natural morning light can actually make that transition a little easier. All right, good advice there. Try to make it a little easier. And as Max just mentioned, losing an hour of sleep can affect some people's health. Ursula Perry has more on the health consequences of daylight saving time and some additional ways you can make that transition a little easier. Skipping an hour ahead of spring for daylight saving time doesn't just change the time. There's also a change in your sleep and in your circadian rhythm, and ultimately that has an effect on uh, physical health as well as mental health. In fact, a University of Michigan study found hospitals report a 24% spike in heart attack visits on the Monday following the loss of an hour for daylight saving time. Stroke rates also 8% higher the first two days after the time change. So how can you make springing forward a little easier on your health? you can actually start shifting the times that you go to bed and the times you wake up by about 15 or 20 minutes per night. Also expose yourself to sunlight in the morning because that will help your circadian rhythm work closely aligned to that change in sleep. And exercising at the right time can get your body ready for the transition. It's best to work out in the morning or early afternoon. 
I would avoid exercising right before bed as that can wake you up a little bit during the time that you're going to want to be sleeping. There have been efforts over the years here in Texas to eliminate these time shifts. A lot of people say they're antiquated since big parts of our economy is no longer based on when farms are doing a harvest. If you don't like them, there are places you can go. The U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and parts of Arizona do not practice daylight saving time. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right. would, would you make a move to avoid? We just need to go to the time? islands. That's it. Right? <laughs> I'll stick in San Antonio. Yeah, Me too. I, I like the Alamo City. What I don't like is that we haven't seen significant rain in uh, a while. Oh, I know. Yeah. So uh, take a look. The last time we saw more than a quarter of an inch of rain in a 24 hour period here in San Antonio was 37 days ago on February 3rd. It's even worse the further west you go. The last time Del Rio saw a quarter of an inch of rain uh, in the 24 hour period, 129 nine days all the way back in November and it's really starting to show uh, when it comes to drought conditions drought spreading from west to east we're now seeing areas of Bear County mainly on the south side of Bear County under a severe drought but the remainder of the county is under at least moderate drought and then all across the winter garden region we've got uh, extreme drought and then even out toward Del Rio we just mentioned that stat extreme drought out there as well but guess what hardly any rain whatsoever in our forecast over the next seven days. Zero percent chance or at least less than 10 percent chance every single day. So we're in for a bit of a dry spell and drought is likely to worsen. But at least and this is the good news, at least the weather will be more spring like in the week ahead for those enjoying spring break outside right now, though, nothing but cold as we see the first light of the day. It's 29 degrees outside. It feels like it's 24, even though those winds have calmed down quite quite a bit from yesterday. Winds are still from uh, the west northwest at about five miles per hour, so it feels like it's 24 degrees. Again, we've been saying this all morning. This is our latest freeze since 2006 in San Antonio. Uh, not so the case up in the hill country, but it's still very cold and well below freezing. 20 in Kerrville, 21 in Fredericksburg. It's 23 in Hondo, 32 in Del Rio, 27 in Pleasanton, 28 in Gonzales, and 27 in New Braunfels. But we are going to see abundant sunshine today, so the temperatures will rebound. It's going to be a cool and sunny day today. We'll be at 50 by noon and 58 for the afternoon high temperature. Winds light and variable. Do not forget the jacket if you're going out tonight because it's going to get cold very quickly. Temperatures falling to near 40 degrees by midnight after sunset at 641 p.m. Speaking of sunset, speaking of daylight saving time, it's going to begin at 2 a.m. overnight. So this morning the sun is rising right now at 640 47, but tomorrow the sunrise will be at 745 in the morning and sunset's going to be an hour later too. Tonight the sun's going to set at 640, but tomorrow 741 sunset. Uh, so uh, it'll be an hour later as well. Now the dew points are very, very dry. Dew point is in the teens right now, 14 degrees. That is very low and we're actually expecting dew points to go down even more today. Very dry air. Chapstick weather, as I like to call it, but also meteorologically, dry air cools down and warms up quickly. And tonight, we're going to see another freeze as the air cools down very quickly. By tomorrow morning, morning low will be near 30 degrees in San Antonio. So keep those plants in for another night, cover them up for another night. I don't anticipate another freeze over the next several days in San Antonio, but tomorrow morning, we're likely going to have a light freeze around the Alamo City. But as I just mentioned, the dry air is going to stay in place and so we'll warm up very quickly. We'll be in the mid to upper 60s for your Sunday. A beautiful day, a little bit more comfortable outside than today where we'll be in the 50s for most of the day, even near 71 tomorrow for Del Rio. All right, looking ahead, on Monday, we're going to be even warmer, 80 for the high temperature on Monday. It is going to be breezy both tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday. A front is going to move through Tuesday, but this is not going to be a strong front. It's really just going to keep the humidity low. Mornings will be in the 40s and 50s. Afternoons will be in the 70s and 80s. That's a spring break forecast. The only thing that's missing, spring-like storms. Again, we just don't have that chance for rain over the next seven days. Max and Stephanie. Well, at least it'll be nice for the spring breakers out there. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 649, 29 degrees out. Texas Eats is showcasing the flavors of the islands of the Caribbean. It's coming up after the break.
All right, let's take a live look out at the roadways. So we are hearing about a crash at 281 in Bitters. Our Jonathan Cotto is on the way, and we're going to be bringing you any information as soon as it becomes available. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, two, five, fireball six, daily four, zero, two, three, four, fireball one. Cash five, two, 16, 18, 33, 35. Mega millions, 28, 24, 39, 44, 66, big number 25. Mega player three, good luck, we'll be right back. Welcome back, we have some breaking news. A deadly crash shutting down part of Highway 281. Our Jonathan Goto is live at the scene with more information. Jonathan, what can you tell us? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Max. Uh, and as you mentioned, I'm located right now off the northbound lanes here of 281. If you're a morning commuter, the exit near Bitters Road has been closed off. But this is what we've been able to learn so far. Police have told us that a person driving a motorcycle is now dead after a crash. As you can see there at a distance, what's left of that motorcycle, as well as the SUV, the black SUV involved in this vehicle. We're told that a woman driving northbound on 281 struck that motorcycle at some point. Uh, the woman claims that the motorcycle either slowed down or stalled on the roadway, but of course that is still unclear and not confirmed. At this time, we have a number of SAPD units right now, and as I mentioned, uh, 281 northbound at Bitters is closed off right now. All the morning commuters this morning are taking the access road here, as you can see, but of course the cause of this crash this morning is still under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. Max Stephanie. All right, Jonathan Cotto reporting live on the scene. We're going to have so much more information throughout the morning, like you said. And, of course, not only on air, but online as well, KSAT.com. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. And today on Texas Eats at 10 a.m., David Elder takes us to a spot at the Pearl. All right, so they are serving up some savory Jamaican and Caribbean street foods. Take a look. You want to go big and bold, you can go big and bold. You got the pork belly over here. So talk to me about this. We have it in the bowl and you have it in a wrap. Yes, so this is the pork belly bowl. It's a pineapple habanero glazed uh, pork belly, but it's not too spicy. You've got the uh, cilantro lime rice at the bottom, your choice of veggie. Now that is our hot pepper sauce. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> hot pepper sauce. We're going to do it. I'm going to go for it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. You made this into candy. Oh yeah, yeah. This is next level, like just over the top. Yeah. I'm in. Yes. The wrap. I love wraps. I know. I'm in. I could tell because you're already excited with the first shot of yeah. food, and when you saw the wrap, you're like, oh my goodness. Well, the pickled onions, like. <laughs> Delicious. All right, sorry, we're running out of time. 655, 29 degrees out. We'll be right back. Coming up on GMA, the war in Ukraine reaching a new stage of terror. Russian attacks on cities and the bombardment of Ukrainian civilians escalating. Officials now saying a mayor has been kidnapped by Russian troops. And President Biden's new critical warning to Russia against using chemical weapons. His urgent message comes as the White House revealed a new round of sanctions against members of Russia's parliament and families associated with the Kremlin. We have the latest on the overwhelming humanitarian crisis and the country's from across the world trying to help the refugees fleeing their homes and that violence. Plus, a major storm threatening more than 75 million Americans this weekend. The rough winter weather bringing heavy rain, heavy snow, and strong winds slamming the south overnight. And some states on alert for tornadoes. Our team has the latest timing on the track. And how technology can help you drive less and save more. We're sharing the most effective ways to save while gas rates peak and consumer prices see the biggest increase in 40 years. It's all ahead right here on GMA. 27 right now outside in San Antonio. That is uh, very cold out there. In fact, below freezing. It's 18 in Kerrville, 21 in Hondo. Our latest freeze since 2006, but it's going to be a sunny day. Will be near 58 this afternoon and looking ahead temperatures will rebound nicely tomorrow too after another light morning freeze right. hey max and <laughs> stephanie it's going to be 80 degrees on monday what a change Whoa. yeah happy saturday we'll see you at eight live from case at 12. good morning san antonio starts 
right now. A major crash on 281 North at Bitters Road this morning. The scene is still very active out there. We're still getting information in, but we expect to hear from Jonathan Cotto throughout the show on what you need to know before you hit the road. All right, for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday, March 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning, starting your weekend with us. And you guys are just getting off spring break, or I guess we're, the last section of spring finishing. break. We're finishing. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we had spring break last week, but I understand a lot of people will be on spring break this week, and mm -hmm. the weather might work out this time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I almost feel bad for you guys, but Sarah Spivey telling us sunny. A lot less of a temperature roller coaster in the week ahead for those enjoying spring break, but it is cold this morning. In fact, we got down to 27 degrees in San Antonio. This is the latest freeze we've seen in San Antonio since 2006. But with just a little bit of sun, we've already been able to warm up by a, a few degrees. Now it's still 32 degrees at the airport. That's where this live cam is. But with winds from the west northwest close to 10 miles per hour, it feels like it's 25. Temperatures, though, will skyrocket from here. And we'll be looking at a cool but sunny day with highs in the mid, uh, pardon me, in the upper 50s. It is in the mid 20s, though. Out in Kerrville, it's 24 degrees, 24 in Comfort, 30 in Bird Stage Airfield 21 in Lost Maples, still below freezing in Castroville. But you can see that with just a couple of hours of sun, uh, pardon me, just an hour of sun or so, we've been able to see temperatures rise above freezing in many spots. So today, 58, sunny and cool. Don't put those plants outside just yet. Keep them inside or cover them up because overnight tonight we are anticipating another freeze, likely going to get down to 30 degrees Sunday morning in San Antonio. Remember, we lose an hour of sleep tonight as we uh, spring forward. Daylight saving time begins. Freezing start tomorrow, but a nice afternoon, almost 10 degrees warmer in the mid to upper 60s. We got the pollen count in. It looks pretty good. Oh, we've got our four allergens in the air, molds, juniper, elm, and oak, and they are all low. But let's say you do want to go out and get a car wash. Maybe you've got a little bit of pollen on your car or just some dirt. It's going to look good for a car wash forecast over the next three days, including this weekend. Today, tomorrow, and Monday, plenty of sunshine, no chance for rain. That's about the only good thing about no chance for rain is that we can get the car washed. Uh, we are starting to see drought conditions expand into San Antonio. Antonio and coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about whether or not we have any chance for rain over the next seven days and those spring like temperatures in a few minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A family out of their home this morning after a fire destroyed the roof of their northwest side house. Now, around 8 o'clock last night, someone called the fire department after they noticed the fire in the attic of the home on Quinton Drive. That's not far from Jefferson High School. The family was able to get out safely. Now, officials say that the fire started in the attic, but they're not sure what sparked the flames. They say the family was using the fireplace at the time, but right now it's not clear if that's what caused the fire or if it was something else. Firefighters had a difficult time putting that out because of the strong winds and the fact that the roof had two layers and add-ons on it. They were eventually able to put the fire out, but it completely burned the roof. All right, live music and drinking along the St. Mary's Strip. It's been a back and forth issue with neighbors and businesses right there. So trash, loud music, and crime are just some of the things people in Towin Hill say they're seeing more of these days, and they say the businesses that cater to nightlife are to blame. However, now businesses and homeowners are trying to find a compromise. As Patty Santos reports, the city also ready to give it a try over the next few weeks. Take a listen. At all times during the day, you'll see neighbors walking, neighbors jogging. But starting around 10 p.m., Vanessa Sandoval says nightlife on St. Mary's Street transforms the Tobin Hill community. And some people start what we call pre-gaming, you know, drinking in their cars. And it goes on till bars close on the weekends. I've heard everything from people fighting outside my window, um, challenging each other outside my window. I've heard people vomiting outside my window. Don Hauser complains of parking, trash, and even crime. His tires, he says, have been slashed three different times outside his home. Now I have to park down at the Pearl and walk 
It's like a 15 minute walk. Uh, but a solution might be near. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo has been working with residents and business owners to keep the peace. The bar owners are, are pledging to do a better job of hiring staff to be able to pick up the trash every every night. They've also agreed to all pay into a fund to hire more uh, off-duty police officers. He says most bar owners have signed a voluntary pledge to adjust drink prices, reduce happy hour times, and increase entry age. And they also support parking limitations in the neighborhood. In some streets, that could be eliminating parking on the streets. On other streets, it could be residential only parking during evening hours. Loud noise complaint solutions are also in the works. The city's noise ordinance pilot program records at least 40 complaints to the area since October. The city hired an Austin consultant to shape a new noise ordinance. That is definitely going to be a target area. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. So right now, Councilman Bravo says the businesses and families in the area, they're going to be discussing the proposed changes in an upcoming meeting set for Thursday. You're going to read more about the parking study they discussed and what expected changes could go into effect right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And now to a traffic alert to be aware of this weekend if you're going to be driving in the 1604 and 281 area on the city's north side. TxDOT says they will have the eastbound 1604 flyover ramp to northbound 281 closed from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. today and tomorrow for construction work. Traffic will be detoured to the frontage road, so that means more of a traffic buildup there. So if you can try to avoid that area this weekend, try to find another way around it. All right, so speaking of traffic, we're going to take a look at the latest gas prices. So according to AAA, the national gas price average is $4.32. The average in Texas, it's right at about $4. And here in San Antonio, our average, a cent below the Texas average at $3.99. But here's the thing, it's almost 50% more than what we saw just a week ago. So gas prices, obviously what so many people are talking about right now, but we are still dealing with the pandemic in our community. That is why Metro Health is opening up a pop-up clinic on certain days so that locals can get vaccinated. So today's clinic will be at the Southside Lions Senior Center on Pecan Valley Drive. It's gonna be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. All three vaccines will be available for eligible adults and eligible children. They will also offer flu shots. All right, so it's a story we've been talking about throughout the morning, a deadly crash that happened just after 5 a.m. this morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Jonathan Cotto, who is there live. Let's take a look. Max Stephanie, it's still very much an active scene out here on the northbound lanes of 281. Police are still investigating and trying to piece together and learn exactly what caused this crash. This is what we know right now. It was shortly after 5 o'clock this morning when San Antonio police were called out to the main lanes of 281 near Bitters Road. Police say a man on his motorcycle was rear-ended by a woman driving this SUV. They tell us she claims the motorcycle slowed down or stalled in the middle of the highway. We have learned the motorcyclist was traveling in a group, but police say they were further ahead on the highway when he was struck. Police tell us the man appears to be in his 40s and was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, police tell us they don't believe alcohol was a factor. They say the woman did not appear to be intoxicated as of right now. She's not pending any charges. But again, this crash is under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Time now, 8.08, 33 degrees out. And congratulations to Coach Pop for breaking the NBA record for all-time wins. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to have the highlights from last night's game against the Jazz that got Pop to that milestone. It was so emotional. You actually had, you were at the game. You had yes. a great video on your phone, and you got to see all of the, you know, former and current Spurs yes. giving him love. Rudy Gay at the game because he plays for that the Jazz. That was cool to see. He went over to give him a hug. And, of course, you know, David Robinson David giving Robinson. him a hug. It was pretty emotional, too. All right. Nice. We're going to have so much more in just a bit. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. Uh, yeah, happy got, spring break. Uh, happy spring break yeah. to all of you out there. So yeah. I'm not going to lie, I have yet to turn on the heat this winter. What? Yeah, I made it. Oh, oh it's not over yet, oh clearly. My goodness. This morning, Sarah, well, we were in the 20s. Have you turned on the heat in your car, Max? Yes. yes. 
Okay, so oh, well, that's you're fair. lying. Well, yeah. now I'm trying to uh, use the gas in the car as yes. least as possible, but that's neither here nor there. Absolutely. Are. Hey, yeah. we, after this morning, you really won't need to operate the heat or the AC in your vehicle today. Uh, so that's a good way to save a little bit on the fuel economy. Point. Let's take a look outside right now. This morning, though, if you have plans to travel early this morning, you do need the heat because it's cold out there. It's 32 degrees, but temperatures are quickly rising as we speak speak and so by about 10 o'clock this morning uh, it should be okay outside we really shouldn't be all that cold temperatures will be in the uh, 50s by lunch and in the upper 50s in the afternoon all right it is uh, feels like it's 25 because we've got winds from the west northwest at about eight miles per hour and looking at temperatures outside right now still below freezing generally uh, on the north side of Bear County and north of Highway 90 in Medina County. It's 30 at Rio Medina, 30 in Hondo, 30 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 27 in Bulverde, 24 in Comfort. But you can see in New Braunfels and in Canyon Lake, as well as down near Stinson and JBSA Randolph, temperatures have already risen above freezing. So Del Rio is at 34 right now, but just an hour ago, their temperature was 26. That was their morning low. This beats an old record for the morning low, the lowest temperature on this state in, in recorded history in Del Rio. 32 in Uvalde and 26 in Fredericksburg. And we're not done with the freezes yet. I do anticipate another freeze early tomorrow morning. So keep those uh, plants inside or covered up for one more night. But we are going to see abundant sunshine today, perhaps a few wispy cirrus clouds out and about in a high temperature near 60 degrees this afternoon. Upper 50s around San Antonio, mid to upper 50s in the Hill Country, 57 in Kerrville, and even in the low to mid 60s out in Del Rio, 64 for the high. So really impressive warm up there in Del Rio from 26 to 64. We have a dry atmosphere to thank for the quick cool downs and the quick warm ups. A dry atmosphere really does cool down and warm up very quickly. So dew points are in the teens around San Antonio and they could even go down a little bit more from where they're at right now. That is very dry air. Not only does it affect the temperature up and down uh, over the day, but it also is chapstick weather. You're going to need a little extra chapstick today and static shock forecast is really high today so you're gonna uh, probably get shocked a few times out there today static shock uh, static electricity risk is is pretty high today so sunny weather all day long today dry 50 degrees at noon 58 for the afternoon high temperature that is well below seasonably average we usually see a high temperature in the low 70s today uh, so a cool day and sunny light and variable winds better than yesterday when we were dealing with wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. Sun's going to set at 641 and it is going to be chilly tonight. Temperatures will fall into the 40s. Hey, don't forget that overnight we lose an hour of sleep uh, as we spring forward and sunset will be after 7 p.m. tomorrow. A big low pressure system with the cold front that brought us the, the cooler air is pushing across the East Coast. A severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado watches, and snowfall from this dynamic system. But we've, in its wake, just got a high pressure system. High pressure, high means dry, calm weather. And tomorrow morning, it's going to mean an early morning freeze for us. Uh, temperatures should have bottomed out right near 30 degrees tomorrow morning. So again, one more night of freeze precautions for those plants that may have already been planted, those gardens that may have already been planted, but we'll be nearly 10 degrees warmer than we are today. Tomorrow it'll be breezy, upper 60s for the high. Then on Monday, 80 degrees, <laughs> and we'll be looking at a cold front moving through Tuesday, but that'll just keep things dry for us, only dropping temperatures by a few degrees. So sunny 70s and 80s next week. The one thing that's missing is rain and drought conditions are expanding, and so I wish we could see a little bit of rain there, but at least the weather will be nice for spring breakers. Enjoy the sunshine. Some positives there. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 816, 33 degrees out. We are excited about last night's win. Oh, Yay, just, go Spurs go. And Stephanie started just tweeted out. She <laughs> got to see the historic game in person and still made it to work Saturday morning, dark and early, to come hang out with us. <laughs> She's our sideline correspondent. We're going to hear from her and see all these emotional moments Aww. from the win last night in just a few moments. 
Good morning, welcome back in. Go Spurs, go. All right, so everyone clearly very anxious last night to find out if head coach Greg Popovich would become the most winningest head coach in NBA history. It was a matter of when, not if. And the Spurs delivered. Huge win over the Utah Jazz. Let's roll the highlights. Here we go. From three, Logo DeJounte to finish up the first quarter. And look at this. Keep your head on a swivel. Devin Vassell, crisscross and up. Beautiful layup. And then again, absorb the contact. Got to put it in. Look at that. Keldon Johnson, one of seven from three, but doesn't matter. And here we go. San Antonio homegrown talent. Wagner alum. Bang. Jordan Clarkson killing it. All right. New spur. Josh Richardson, another crisscross and a slam. Gotta love it. Seven for two. And then from downtown, bang, Lonnie Walker showing some ferocity. And this was it. 30 seconds left in the game. And that was really the last bucket that would give Pop the historic moment. Look at that. A lot of love. Jakob jumping up and down. <laughs> DeJounte was the first player to really give him a hug afterwards. Oh, and he then was fast. It was super fast in there. Pop getting his 1,336th win. All-time leader, congratulations. It's just a, a testament to a whole lot of people. Uh, something like this does not belong to one individual. Uh, you know, basketball is a team sport. And, uh, you know, you preach to your players that they have to do it together. And that's certainly been uh, the case in, in my life. Uh, so, first and foremost, tip-off is at 7 o'clock. That graphic says 7.30, so it is 7 o'clock. We don't want to miss you, want you to miss the first exactly. quarter. So, 7 o'clock tonight, no rest because they're taking on the Pacers. Right now, I know everyone was very concerned. We are still in the playoff hunt. We are one game out of the 10 seed behind the Blazers, uh, or behind the Pelicans. So, we have time. We can still make the playoff to the playoff. It's complicated, but we still have a chance to postseason. Yes, and in the meantime, if you want to celebrate Coach Pop right now on KSET.com, we are continuing to celebrate him. You can look back at the photos throughout the years with the Spurs and take a look at some of his best coaching moments. It's all in the sports section of our website. Aww. Emotional. Yes, I mean, we were so happy for him. I mean, we were scared because we're down it's close last game. quarter. Right, but super exciting. Congratulations, Coach Pop. All right, 822, 34 degrees. We'll be right back. So that is a favorite, fan favorite. What that is, is it's a, a chili paste, guajong, uh, Korean uh, paste, uh, honey. Uh, we've got some fresh garlic in there and a couple of other things. And we just, uh, we bread the chicken breast, a huge chicken breast in panko breadcrumb. All right, I'm gonna give it a bite here. Pickle, Check that out. I mean, pickles just ripping out the side, nice saucy bottom. Here we go. Their spicy chicken sandwich has a really nice panko breading on the outside. It's got a really good crunch, but that sauce on there, it's a really good blend of sweet and heat. And then that bread that they're making in-house, I and mean, this is just a killer sandwich. I mean, you have such a, a high-end culinary background, and you're infusing that knowledge and that, that all your experience into these really approachable sandwiches. I'm in. I don't think he's ever shown something where I'm like, eh, not for yeah, me. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you're always in, right? But like a hot chicken sandwich, I'm in. Yeah. Spicy, it's good. Yeah. We're good to go. Me too. I'm there with you. All right, time now, 827, 34 degrees out. And still ahead, the latest from Ukraine. There is new evidence that the Russians are repositioning their forces. And a one-year anniversary of an open murder case in Sherth Police asking for your help in the investigation. We have details in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 8.30 this morning, Saturday, March 12th. Stephanie Cerner, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's an exciting day. It is an exciting yes. day. It is so exciting for you. I was jealous all morning. You made it to the Spurs game last night, the yes. historic game, and you still made it to work this morning. Of course. I'm not going to miss out on this. That's right. Well, Got to visit my friend Max and Sarah. Look at us, yeah. Sarah. 
I'm happy you're here, Steph. Happy and to be here. I'm sorry that you had to come here when it's freezing outside. Well, <laughs> I, I have many jackets. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, it, if you didn't know, it's freezing outside. We got down to 27 degrees in San Antonio. This is the latest freeze we've had since 2006. But with sunshine, we're already warming up above freezing in many places. Let's take a look out with those temperatures. It's 32 in Holotus, 34, though, at JBSA Ranch. 38 at Stinson. It's 28 in Kerrville, 28 in Comfort, and 29 in Bandera. And I think that as we head into this next hour here, most of us, if not all of us, across the metro area will be above freezing. By 10, we'll be at 43, noon 50, sunny and cool all day long, but at least we'll see that sunshine. 58 degrees for the high. Sun's going to set at 641. Saturday night plans. Make sure you have the jacket with you because it's going to get cold quickly. We'll be at 40 degrees by midnight. Light and variable winds. Pollen count looks good today. We've got four allergens out there. It's a little busy, but they're all low. Molds, juniper, elm, and oak all low today. And finally, it is the start of spring break for some and the end of spring break for others. Either way, there's probably going to be a lot of traveling across the state of Texas today. Weather looks great for that. No hiccups as far as weather is concerned uh, early tomorrow morning it'll be below freezing for many areas other than south texas but again with plenty of sunshine temperatures will warm up nicely into the 60s and 70s across the state so no rain in the forecast for texas over the weekend that's good for the roads but bad for the drought coming up in the forecast we're going to show you where the drought is right now how bad it is and whether or not we can experience any rain in the week ahead steph Thank you, Sarah. It has been one year since a 21 year old man was killed in shirts and police are still asking for the public's help in finding the person responsible for his death. Shirts police say 21 year old Jared Jeffrey was shot and killed at the Sycamore Creek Apartments last year on March 12th. Officers found Jeffrey shot in the driver's seat of a silver Mercedes sedan. Witnesses say a man was seen talking with Jeffrey just before that shooting. If you have any information, you are asked to call Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers at number is on your screen. It's 877-403-8477. Out of the latest in Russia's war in Ukraine, new evidence this morning that the Russians are repositioning their forces, trying to encircle the Ukraine capital of Kiev. It comes amid heightened concern that Russia could stage a chemical weapons attack to escalate the war even further. ABC's Maggie Rowley has the latest. This morning, local officials calling Russia's widening attacks on key Ukrainian cities in Armageddon. In the south, in Mariupol, the mayor saying his city is being shelled every 30 minutes, claiming thousands have now been killed. In the capital of Kyiv, new satellite images showing Russian military units closing in, now close to nine miles of the city center, and firing artillery towards residential areas. Heavy fighting in the east, leaving this town of Volnavaha in ruins. This family trapped in their basement for more than 10 days as buildings fell around them. And overnight, shelling in the strategic stronghold of Mykolaiv, the region's governor, Vitaly Kim, sitting down with us remotely just moments after his city came under fire. We have uh, been shot, no, bombed uh, in, in a rocket attack. We have uh, damages in the private sector, the civilian sector damages in electricity, uh, heat, and uh, gas. Kim speaking to the people of his city almost hourly, letting them know what's happening on the ground in real time. But he tells us now he fears for his family as local officials are increasingly becoming targets. President Zelensky equating the kidnapping to ISIS terror and praising the mayor in a video message as someone who bravely defends Ukraine and the members of his community. And now new fears of false flags. Russia doubling down on fake claims about chemical weapons being developed by Ukraine with help from the U.S. It's believed in an attempt to justify Russia's own use in warfare. A senior U.S. official telling ABC News the Russians are now bringing hazmat suits into Ukraine. Russia has a track record of falsely accusing other countries of the very violations that Russia itself is perpetrating. President Biden declining to say if a Russian chemical attack in Ukraine would be met with a U.S. military response. 
I'm not going to speak about the intelligence, but, but uh, Russia would pay a severe price if they use Kim. Despite these escalating dangers, Kim, like so many Ukrainians, tells us he can't leave the city. These are his people and his land. How confident are you that you and your town and Ukrainian troops uh, can really fight Russia right now? We have no choice. We have to and to fight and to defend our land. And I'm truly sure that we will win this war. That was Maggie Rooley reporting in your morning headlines here at home. A Texas judge ruling that providing gender affirming care is not a reason for the state to investigate a family for child abuse. And it has stopped all such investigations. So this injunction broadens the judge's earlier order blocking the state's investigation of parents of one transgender teenager. The American Civil Liberties Union and Lambda Legal sued on behalf of the parents of a 16 year old girl over the investigation and over Governor Greg Abbott's directive. The man accused of killing six people at a parade in Wisconsin last year will head to trial in October. 39-year-old Daryl Brooks Jr. was in court yesterday and the judge expressed concerns over a potential conflict of interest. The judge said she previously texted one of the victim's parents expressing her condolences. Brooks previously pled not guilty to 77 charges against him, including homicide and reckless endangerment. Six people were killed and more than 60 others injured that day. Brooks is expected back in court at the end of this month. And Gabby Petito's family suing the parents of Brian Laundrie. Her parents claim Christopher and Roberta Laundrie knew their son murdered Gabby and were working to help him get out of the country. Petito was reported missing last summer during a cross-country trip with Laundrie. Laundrie returned home to Florida, then he too disappeared. Both of their bodies were found later. The Laundrie's family attorney declined to comment on that lawsuit. However, after Petito's body was found, the attorney said the Laundries didn't know where their son was. Record gas prices and the highest levels of inflation in 40 years. There's a lot of questions that have direct impacts on families across the country and across our community. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., a specialist with Victory Capital is joining us live. We're going to be discussing what led us to these current situations with inflation and gas prices. What do these numbers mean for you and your family? And what comes next? So if you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for all the answers. All right. Still have time. Yeah, it's true. 8, 38, 34 degrees out. All right. Big news yesterday. Intersection of NFL and courts. Will we see an indictment for Deshaun Watts? We have the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Yeah, it's March and for a lot of us, you know, it's spring break, but it is 34 degrees out there for now. Things will change a little later on. And before we go to break, a quick happy, happy, sorry, happy <laughs> National Working Moms Day today to all the moms out there, whether you have a paying job or you're a stay at home mom, we know you are always working. So thank you for all you do and we hope you have an awesome day. Yay. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. It's been something we've been talking about for weeks now, skyrocketing gas prices. So in a bid to keep costs down, people are actually turning to carpooling. That's right. However, after almost two years of driving solo during COVID, how do you make it to work? ABC's Becky Worley has a story. Driving solo has become an expensive habit. This week, the national average price of a gallon of gas jumped to $4.33, according to AAA. But the logistics of finding a carpool partner can be a deal breaker. Enter driving app Waze. Here's how it works. Waze Carpool is a standalone app you download. Enter your commute route and times. Then it finds others with a similar commute. It's kind of like Tinder for carpoolers. It even shows you the cheapest gas prices at stations along your route. And about gas. Waze users all the time are updating gas prices at gas stations. So you have access to all of that information right in the app. Another app for parents taking kids to school or sports is the app Carpool Kids. Jonathan Liu originally developed the app as a way to help manage his own family's carpool needs. You would sign up and create a carpool. And in the app, a carpool is just a group of you and your friends and the kids who are going to be um, taking part in the events that you want to carpool to. Jill Bender's sons play lacrosse. So using the carpool's app organizes all of their travel to and from practice and games. It saves me a lot of headache because um, they're on all different teams, so they have different schedules, and I wouldn't be able to do it all myself. 
Katie Renkin is a mom in Jill's carpool and says it's necessary and helps everyone save money. Gas prices are over $4 here, and we're traveling, we're driving really long distances to some of these games, and it's it's a lot more efficient to have one car taking five kids than five cars. All good options to defray costs in this time of crazy gas prices. Now, while COVID infection rates are lower, tips to carpool safety, wear a mask, sit in different rows if you can, and either keep the windows cracked or put the car's ventilation system on the non-recycled air mode to keep fresh air coming in at all times. All right, so that was Becky Worley reporting. I will say, if you're out and about this morning, it's a lot warmer right now than it was to start the day, and that's yeah, saying something. It's Already. still cold, though. It's still I mean, cold. Temperatures are still <laughs> in the 30s, right? But we were down at 27 degrees this morning, wow. Max and Stephanie. Yeah, so not only is it cold, but it's also dry out there, and we don't really have good prospects for any kind of rain. And It's been a while since we've seen healthy storms and, and rainfall in San Antonio. In fact... It's been 37 days since we've seen at least a quarter of an inch of rain in a 24 hour period uh, reported at the San Antonio International Airport. And, and yeah, that's a long time. But look out to the west where Del Rio, it's been 129 days since they've seen about a quarter of an inch of rainfall in a 24 hour period. That's back in November. So uh, it's no surprise that drought is starting to spread in from the west. You can see that areas in this orange color are in severe drought with all of Bear County, at least in moderate drought and then extreme drought for the Winter Garden region and points south and west of San Antonio with Del Rio under extreme drought as well. And 89% of the state of Texas is under some drought conditions. So we could use some rain, but look at this. I mean, zero rain chances over the next seven days in San Antonio. So if we can't get the rain, at least the weather is going to be pleasant. Many people are going to be enjoying spring break in the week ahead. Outside right now, totally sunny, not a cloud in the sky. It's still cold, still in the 30s, and it feels like it's in the 20s because of a wind from the west northwest at about 10 miles per hour. But areas are getting above freezing as we speak from just an hour of sunshine. It's 33 in New Braunfels, 37 in Uvalde, 34 in Del Rio. Kerrville was in the teens this morning and is now at 30 degrees. And so today, although it's going to be a cool day, it's going to be a sunny day and we'll get up into the 50s. We'll be at 50 degrees by lunch, 58 for the afternoon high temperature, light and variable winds. If you have plans tonight, it's going to get cold as soon as the sun sets at 641. Temperatures will be in the 40s uh, and even in the 30s by midnight. Speaking of sunset, guess what we got to do overnight tonight? Those clocks are going to go forward. I know I heard a boo over there from Stephanie. So daylight saving time does begin tonight at two o'clock in the morning, early Sunday morning. Our sunrise this morning was 647. Tomorrow the sun is going to rise at 745 in the morning. And for as for sunset, 640, 641 tonight in San Antonio, 641 tomorrow, 741 tomorrow night in San Antonio. So again, uh, the sunrise and sunset will be an hour later and something to adjust to. It is dry outside. This beige gray brown looking map is the dew point that shows how dry it is out there. Dew points are in the teens in San Antonio. That is at the bottom of the scale. That is bone dry. That is chapstick weather. That is static electricity weather and that is temperature swing weather. So it's cold in the morning and, and fairly warmer in the afternoon. And so by tomorrow morning, we're going to lose a lot of the heat that we get throughout the day today. So tomorrow morning, a morning freeze is likely once again leave those plants inside or covered for one more night. And like I met, like I said, it's going to be dry. So we're going to warm up quickly after uh, the morning sunrise tomorrow morning. We'll be in the upper 60s tomorrow and even in the 70s out toward Del Rio, Laredo, Eagle Pass. Tomorrow is going to be nicer, about 10 degrees warmer, but breezy in the afternoon. And then Monday, 80 degrees for the high temperature on Monday. A weak cool front is going to move through Tuesday night. That's going to keep things nice 
nice and dry outside for us, so it'll feel nice, but take away any kind of rain chances. And then highs this week will be in the 70s and 80s. A much more spring-like forecast for this week's spring breakers compared to last week's spring breakers. Yeah, not too bad. We'll just have to get through the overnight freezing. And, right, and, then... and I'll have another look at that pollen count coming up in a bit, too. Very good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 848, 37 degrees up. Let's take a look at your winning a lot of numbers. Pick three, zero, two, five, fireball six, daily four, zero, two, three, four, fireball one. Do you ever play? I only play like when the, the whole office is playing. Okay. And then I'm like, okay, well, I can't be the only one who doesn't win here, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right. Cash five, two, 16, 18, 33, 35. Mega Millions, 24, 28, 39, 44, 66. Big number 25. Mega Pyre 3, good luck. We'll be right back. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Big news in the NFL world yesterday. Deshaun Watson not facing any criminal charges. This after a Houston grand jury decided not to indict the Texans quarterback. So all of this stems from 22 lawsuits filed against Deshaun Watson, accusing him of sexual assault, including... 10 women who filed criminal charges, but after six hours of presenting evidence, the grand jury voted not to indict. All right, back here at home, high school basketball now. The Bernie Greyhounds making their second consecutive appearance in the 4A state semifinals, taking on Wichita Falls, and it was in the Alamo Dome. Look at this. Greyhounds sprint to an early lead thanks to Devin Stiles. Score 11 of Bernie's first 13, and they would lead 13 to 11 after one third quarter. Oh, here we go. We found the baseline bucket and pull up Jay. Got to love it. Hershey came back behind and tied it at 52. The Greyhounds can't keep up. They fall short. They fall 63 to 57 in OT. Meanwhile, Cole Cougars going after their first ever back to back state title in high school basketball. Face the number one ranked Dallas Madison later this morning. The same team that won the state title in 2019. That same team that Cole would Face in 2020, but remember, COVID shut down the tournament after the state semifinals. Now they get a shot at a rematch after the Cougars were robbed of a shot at the state title in 2020. Cole set to play at 10 a.m. We're gonna have highlights online and, of course, later today in our newscasts. And Greg, I do have one request for you. Yes. Please do not ever do a sports cast in your pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> Longhorns are in turmoil after their upset loss at home to Kansas, producing their first five game losing streak since Greg Simmons was born. The Jayhawks. <laughs> that was a long time ago, Greg Simmons. Yes, it was. <laughs> All right. So, what? love all of this. This is phenomenal. Speaking of our newscast, which is what I left off on. We all remember that one. And this. Oh, my God. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow night, KSAT 12 Sports will be celebrating 29 years of instant replay being on the air. So make sure to join at Craig Simmons, Larry Ramirez, and Andrew as they look back at some of the best moments from the last 52 episodes. Instant replay every Sunday at 11 p.m. Wow, congratulations. Do you think Greg will show up in his pajamas? I hope so. <laughs> just for memory's sake. <laughs> I don't think so. He's always dressed up. All right, time now, just about 8.55, 37 degrees out. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Time Now, 8.57. So we understand a lot of people are feeling the pain at the pump and in their wallets. So that's why we have come up with a few tips to help you get the most of your gas mileage. We also have a web story that shows you where you can find the lowest gas prices around the city. Just look for the story on our homepage. All right, time now, 8.57, 37 degrees out. And coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, where you can see and meet one of the stars of Encanto oh. right here in San Antonio today. And people everywhere trying to figure out their budgets, but we're seeing inflation, we're seeing high gas prices. So, 12 on your sides report a line your budget that could nix, that could save you a bunch. We're going to explain just a bit. Terrifying situation this morning on 281, a deadly crash. We're going to have the latest details from police investigating on the scene. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, the sun's out, but it's still cold out there. We're at 37 degrees, well, for now. All right, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It's so deceiving because you look outside from live cam. Yep. It is gorgeous. We didn't see a cloud in the sky. Right. We start off in the 20s. I know, and it's March. So you're looking <laughs> at the calendar, and then some of you are starting spring break, so you're like, well, surely it's like 80. Mm, not yet. Very well, cool. I know, uh, you know, Max and Steph, 
It's not unusual for us to see freezes in March mornings, but this is the latest uh, freeze has occurred since 2006 in San Antonio. But here's the thing. We're already 12 degrees warmer than how we started off the day because of a couple of hours of sunshine. It is now 39 degrees at the airport, 34 at Bernie Stage Airfield. It just got above freezing in Comfort, 33 in Bandera. It's right at freezing in Kerrville right now, but again, that's temporary. We're going to see temperatures above freezing for all of the KSAT 12 viewing area in just a couple of minutes here. 41 in New Braunfels, 42 at Stinson, it's 42 in Pleasanton. So it is cold out there, and today is going to be cool, but at least it's going to be sunny. We'll top off in the upper 50s. Now do not take your plants out just yet because we have one more morning of a freeze early tomorrow morning, morning low near 30 degrees. So we're going to need to uh, make sure to uh, keep those plants inside or cover them up for one more night. We lose an hour of sleep tonight as we spring forward because daylight saving time starts and tomorrow's going to be great after that freezing start. High temperature in the mid to upper 60s. Let's take a look at the pollen count, which we got in this morning for allergens out there today, but thankfully they're all low molds, juniper, elm and oak all low this morning and this Saturday. And if you want to go ahead and get your car washed this weekend, it's going to be a great weekend for it because we're going to have sunny skies, no chance for rain. And honestly, in the days ahead and in the week ahead, hard for us to see any rain as well. So go ahead and get that car washed. Take the dog for a walk. The sun's going to be out. You'll just need a light jacket today. Hey, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about about uh, that morning freeze tomorrow and what the weather will look like for those on spring break this week. Hint, it's going to be pretty nice. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, portions of 281 closed down and a motorcyclist dead after an early morning crash. All of this on 281 near Bitters. Police on the scene telling us a man on a motorcycle was traveling northbound on 281. A woman in an SUV came up from behind, hit that motorcycle. Uh, the woman claims that the Motorcycle slowed down, it was stalled in the middle of the highway. Investigators right now are still working out, trying to figure out what exactly happened. Right now, though, the driver not facing any charges. Northbound lanes of 281 at Bitters are shut down for the next few hours. Processing the scene, we are still waiting to learn the name of the man who was killed. Top stories this morning. San Antonio police are asking for your help identifying two robbery suspects who they say targeted a southeast side convenience store. So take a look at your screen. Officers tell us that these two walked into the Five Corner Food Mart in the 3500 block of Geber Street on February 19th. Now we are told that one of them pulled a gun and demanded the money and police say the other person broke into a coin operating machine and took the money from it and ran off. So if you can help identify the suspects, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. And Metro Health is opening up pop-up clinics on certain days so residents can get vaccinated. Today's clinic will be at the Southside Lions Senior Center on Pecan Valley Drive. It will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. All three COVID vaccines will be available for eligible adults and children. There will also be flu shots. Officials in Tennessee investigating after two people were killed by a camel after it escaped a Tennessee petting zoo. So the sheriff's office responded to a call that a camel became loose and became acting aggressively after it escaped the zoo grounds. Deputies found two unconscious victims and were giving aid when the camel attacked the officer's patrol vehicle. Now, officers were forced to euthanize the animal. Both victims died from their injuries. Actor Jesse Smollett is currently listed as under direct observation in a Chicago jail. That's according to the Cook County Sheriff's Office. Now on Thursday, Smollett was sentenced to 150 days in jail under constant observation. After the verdict, Smollett shouted in court, quote, I am not suicidal and I am innocent. End quote. Now the former Empire actor was found guilty of making a false police report. His attorneys say they will appeal his conviction. The gun that Kyle Rittenhouse used to kill two people and wound another in August of 2020 has now been destroyed. So the Kenosha Police Department says that the gun was destroyed in a Wisconsin state crime lab. The destruction was a result of an agreement between Rittenhouse's defense attorneys and Kenosha County prosecutors and Dominic Black. Dominic Black was the one who initially bought the gun for Rittenhouse. In November last year, Rittenhouse was acquitted of killing two people and shooting another during the protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin. 
And we are going to return to that late breaking news that was off at the top of the hour. More than a dozen fire units on the scene of a house fire on the city's east side. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live in the 2700 block of Tucker Drive. So Jonathan, what can you tell us? Good morning, Max. That's right. Right now, I'm on the corner of Winaway and Tucker neighborhood on the city's east side. Right now, San Antonio Fire Departments are trying to determine the cause of this fire. But right now, this is what the scene looks like right now. Uh, firefighters are telling us they arrived here around 735 this morning. They say they were here about four minutes later. They got here right away. They were not able to make entry because they were met with a number of challenges, heavy smoke being one of them. The amount of the flames that was consuming the second floor of the store uh, of this house uh, was intense, so that presented a challenge for firefighters initially. Now, right now, they tell us that there was just one lone occupant inside that home. He was outside of the house by the time they arrived. No injuries were reported. They also tell us the second floor of this house collapsed, but the good news is nobody was inside when that happened, and firefighters were already outside of the home as well. Now, Max, Stephanie, right now, um, no, nothing significant here. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Firefighters tell us they have called for dangerous uh, structures to come here and uh, demolish this home right now, do an emergency demolition. That's all right now. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting on the city's east side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, as we've been talking about for weeks now, high gas prices, high food costs, inflation, people really do what they can to try to save any money, and they're looking for easy places to cut the monthly budget. And now a lot of people are eyeing their streaming services. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris shows us some ways to shrink the bills. Jim Wilcox and his family subscribe to 13 streaming services, and they've yet to cut the cable. It's sort of ironic that a person who writes about cord cutting is having difficulty actually doing it. Why so tough? One reason is his wife loves baseball, and they have few options to stream live games. The other, economics. Streaming isn't always cheaper. That's because many companies are raising their prices, and people are finding they have to subscribe to several to get all the shows they want. But there are still some ways to save. Consumer Reports suggest using an antenna to watch local channels. They're free. Consider bundling deals like the one from Disney Plus. That includes Hulu and ESPN Plus for $13.99 a month. Look for promotions and take advantage of those free trials. A lot of people are sort of kicking the tires on different services and they're trying them for a month or two. They're watching all the things that they really want to see and then they unsubscribe. Another way to save? Embrace the commercials. The fastest growing part of the business right now are the free ad supported services. Services like Tubi, Pluto TV, and Crackle offer tons of free movies and shows. Part of the beauty of streaming is no contract, so it's pretty easy to make changes. Just be sure to keep an eye on your credit card bills so you're not paying for services you're no longer using. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, I didn't know some of the streaming services. I don't have Disney yet, I haven't jumped on. <laughs> I know. How could you not? Well, because if you add <laughs> Disney, like Marilyn was saying, it pretty much costs more than cable at that point. I know, but it's Disney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get it. All right, 909, 38 degrees out. In this week's backstage segment, we're giving you a sneak peek at a local production of West Side Story. And after the break, an actress who voices, you know, I haven't seen this movie. I don't it's have Disney. So good. So you, you read this one. This is all <laughs> you. Okay, so this is an actress, Adasa, who voices the character Dolores from Encanto and will be meeting with fans today oh. here. We're going to tell you where. All right, hopefully it's not early. If it is, you got to grab a jacket because it is 38 degrees right now. We saw the 20s earlier this morning. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. And welcome back. It's about 9.13 now. This weekend, one of the actresses from the highly popular movie Encanto is scheduled to make an appearance here in San Antonio. So officials with the Traders Village on the south side say singer, actress, Adessa, will be on hand tomorrow, excuse me, today and Sunday, so all weekend. Adessa is the voice of Dolores Madrigal, one of the main characters of the Disney animated film. So fans can see Adessa tomorrow from 11, I'm sorry, this is, the script says tomorrow, it's actually today, it's Saturday. Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 on and then on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 430. So her stage will be set up at Andy's Treasure Check located on 15th Street and Avenue D inside Traders Village. So admission into Traders Village is free and parking is $5 per vehicle. 
exciting. So for more information, you can call Trader's Village. All right, so I haven't seen the movie, but uh, the Bruno song, <laughs> the Bruno Sarah, song like you popped up on my Spotify the other day, mm -hmm. and I like I went to change it. I was like, oh, this is kind of good. It is good. Yeah, and Dolores is the one who, the weather. She, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Her mood changes the weather. weather yeah. They, well, all, they all have a special talent. You should see it. If that was the case, Sarah, how would your mood be this morning? Ah. Um, it would be really kind of sad in the morning. Oh, oh. And then happy in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be appropriate. Cold this morning, guys, cold. This was a look at this morning's lows. 27 was the low Oof. in San Antonio this morning. It was 17 in Kerrville, 25 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 21 in Hondo. This morning's low of 27, well below freezing, and this is the latest freeze we've seen since 2006 in San Antonio. Our average morning low 51. So we were much cooler than that, much colder than that. But with just an hour and a half here of sunshine, we've been able to warm up above freezing. It's 39. And yeah, there is a wind chill. It feels like it's 33 because of those north winds at 10 miles per hour. So it's still cold, but as you can tell, we're quickly going to warm up today. 34 in Bandera, 39 in Hondo, 38 in Rio Medina, 41 in New Braunfels. You know it was 17 in Kerrville. It's now 32. 42 in Pleasanton, a wider view here. 41 in Del Rio, 41 in Gonzales, and 41 in New Braunfels. But look at this, sunshine all day long. This is when my mood changes to happy, right? Uh, we're going to be near 60 degrees this afternoon around San Antonio, mid to upper 50s in the Hill country and mid to upper 50s in Gonzales and in LaGrange and then the warmer spot on the map will be out west or Del Rio where it'll be closer to 65 but it's still going to be a cool day all across south central Texas and a dry day too. Dew points are in the teens which is at the bottom of the scale. It is bone dry outside and dew points will likely go down even more. Single digit dew point in Yavaldi. It is very, very dry out there. So dry, in fact, that this is a good conductor for static electricity. So static shock forecast shows that, yep, ouch, uh, that'll be a factor today. So keep that in mind. Uh, don't be surprised if you get a little static shock action later on today. Okay, today, as I mentioned, sunny, dry and cool. 43 at 10, 50 at noon, 58 for the afternoon high temperature. So it'll be cool and pleasant. Light and variable winds, not like yesterday when we were dealing with wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. Sunsets tonight at 641. It's going to get chilly quickly. Once again, that dry air that I just mentioned, it cools down and warms up quickly. So once again, tonight, we're going to be seeing another freeze. All right, a big dynamic system off to our east across uh, the east coast. There's tornado watches, severe thunderstorm warnings uh, from the Carolinas all the way down to Florida and a lot of snow across the Appalachian Mountains. This is that same system that brought us the cold air here in San Antonio yesterday and this morning. But in its wake, we're seeing a calm weather pattern in the form of a high pressure system settle over. High means dry, dry air cools down easily and warms up easily. And so tonight we're going to cool down very quickly by the start of the morning tomorrow. We're once again going to have a freeze. It's going to get down to 30 degrees in San Antonio and in the 20s in the hill country. So keep those plants inside, cover them up for one more night. It's going to be hard for us to get to freezing after tomorrow morning for the remainder of uh, spring. So keep that in mind. All right, 66 tomorrow for the high 80 on Monday. You can see that we're going to start a warming trend. There is going to be a front that arrives Tuesday, but this front is not going to make it cold. It's just going to make it dry, so it's going to keep uh, the humidity low. And unfortunately, with that humidity so low, we're also not going to have a chance for rain in the forecast over the next seven days. But fortunately, it's going to be nice for those celebrating spring break this week. 70s and 80s for the high and coming up, I'll have a look at the pond count. Yeah, we'll take a nice week. Yeah, we need one. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 918, 39 degrees out. And today, everyone is encouraged to get their hands oh. dirty. We're talking about growing beautiful plants. We're going to explain. All right, the classic West Side Story. All right, still, talking about, <laughs> still talking about plants today, but West Side Story is set to hit the stage, the theater right here in San Antonio. We're going to explain it just a bit.
My daughter just watched that. Oh, on Disney? Yes, on okay. Disney. <laughs> another, okay. another reason for Disney. <laughs> Here's a look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, two, five, Fireball six, Daily four, zero, two, three, four, Fireball one. Cash five, two, 16, 18, 33, 35. Here we go, Mega Millions, 24, 28, 39, 44, 66. Big number 25, Mega Pyre three. Good luck, we'll be right back. Hi there, welcome back. It is 9.22. So this weekend, a local theater company is putting on an immersive experience of the classic musical West Side Story. Our camera is getting a sneak peek at the new production in this week's Backstage segment. Take a look. company is bringing talent both locally and out of state to bring West Side Story to life. So we have actors who came in actually from Puerto Rico to play the lead roles. So our, our casting is spot on and it's an immersive experience. So as soon as people walk in, not only are they sitting in a round, but the show takes place in between the seats a little bit and in the center. So they're just completely immersed in New York City. You probably know the name West Side Story, at least even if you have never seen it, and there's a reason for that. It's just one of those timeless pieces. You don't have to know about music to feel something when you listen to this music. You don't have to know about musicals to understand what someone singing about being in love feels like. Sunday matinee is we're doing something different, and we're actually dedicating it to a, a sensory friendly show. And what that means for us is that friends who want to come enjoy the show who may not like loud sounds or sudden bursts of noise, we will have the show volume turned down quite a bit and we won't have any loud bursts or sound effects throughout the show. We also have minimal to no lighting effects so people who may get triggered by some flashing lights or something, we won't have that in the show. It's going to be the same great story just without those things so people can enjoy it that way. And we'll also have live uh, sign language interpretation throughout the show as well. For more information on this production, just head to KSAT.com. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. Big shout out to Andrew Wilson and Alexis Page. They put it together and they also behind the scenes, it looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. I'll have to check it out on the website as well. All right, time now, 924, 40 degrees out. And today is about celebrating the soil, water, plants, and vegetation. That story is coming up next. And welcome back. It's 927. Spring is in the air and today might be the perfect day to brush off your shovel and get to work. It's National Plant of Flower Day. So depending on where you live and the weather, you may have noticed that some flowers and other vegetation sprouting from up through the ground. But now is the time to start preparing for summer color, I guess after the weekend freeze. But before you head to your local nursery, <laughs> take some time to learn about the best flowers for your garden. Knowing your hardiness zone will help those vibrant annuals and perennials thrive. All right, time now, 927, 40 degrees out. And it's part two of the backstory of the woman who is created for putting, uh, sorry, credited for putting Shiner on the map and saving that town. That's still to come. Amazing story and breaking news overnight and through the morning. More than a dozen fire units on the east side after a house fire. Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the scene. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. 9.31 this morning, March 12th. I gotta say, though, start of the morning off feeling like January out there. Yeah, it's pretty cold, but it's warming up pretty quickly. It's already 40 degrees now. Yeah. Maybe we start off like late 27, 20, I think. And Sarah Spive, you said this was like the late, one of the latest freezes we've had since like 2006? Yeah, the latest freeze oh. we've had since 2006 in San Antonio. And this morning, Del Rio broke uh, a low temperature record for the day. They were down to 26 degrees. Hey, we did get the pollen count in. I want to start with that. It looks good. We've got four allergens out there, but all of them are low, even in spite of yesterday's windy conditions. We've got molds, juniper, elm, and oak present in low amounts. All right, outside right now, temperatures already much warmer than how we started the day, but still chilly. I mentioned that Del Rio was at 26 degrees, now at 41. So the couple of hours of sunshine have really allowed for us to warm up and at the top of the hour we're likely going to be well into the 40s here in San Antonio 35 in Kerrville 39 in Hondo 41 in New Braunfels 43 in Gonzales and 42 in Pleasanton today's forecast 50 at noon 58 for the high temperature so yeah it's going to stay cool 
but at least we're going to have a decent amount of sunshine, light and variable winds. Spring break ending for some and starting for others, so a busy travel weekend across the state of Texas. Things look great today and even tonight and into tomorrow. Things are going to stay dry just a little bit on the chilly side this evening and by tomorrow afternoon temperatures will be in the 60s and 70s. So no problem from rain with traveling across the state of Texas, but by now we could really use some rain. I'll show you the drought monitor and our rain chances in the week ahead coming up. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Now back to that late breaking news on the city's east side. At one time, at least 14 fire units were on the scene of a house fire in the 2700 block of Tucker. All right, Jonathan Cotto is still live on the scene. He has the latest. So Jonathan, is there any updates so far? Max, it's still very much an active scene. Firefighters are still investigating the cause of this fire, but it's an unfortunate situation for the homeowner of this house right now. If you can just look at the, the amount of damage, the extensive damage, in fact, it's considered a total loss. Dangerous structures will be making their way out here to do an emergency demolition. Fire crews tell us they arrived to this home on the corner of Winaway and Tucker. Again, it's a neighborhood on the city's east side. We know San Antonio Fire Department were called out here to this fire around 7.35 this morning. They tell us that they were on scene about four minutes later, but were met with some challenges. They say they weren't able to get inside the home right away because of the heavy smoke and flames shooting out of that second floor. That second floor did collapse. But the good news here is in the middle of all this, the homeowner was not inside and fire crews had just cleared the home. As you can see right now, um, the aerial effort right now, they're still trying to monitor and keep an eye out on any potential hot spots. And again, dangerous structures is making their way out here to to completely demolish this house right now. Again, the cause of the fire is under investigation. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting live from the city's east side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. In your morning headlines, a Texas judge has ruled that providing gender-affirming care is not a reason for the state to investigate a family for child abuse and has stopped all such investigations. The injunction broadens the judge's earlier order blocking the state's investigation of the parents of one transgender teen. The American Civil Liberties Union and Lambda Legal sued on behalf of the parents of the 16-year-old girl over the investigation and Governor Greg Abbott's directive. All right, new developments in the rust onset shooting. Remember that shooting that ended with the director being shot and killed in a new court filing. Alec Baldwin says that he should not be held accountable. The star is now giving more details of the incident than ever before, and Hutchins' family is responding with a stinging statement. ABC's Zoreen Shaw has that story. This morning, Alec Baldwin filing a complaint against the producers of Rust, trying to make the case he is not responsible for Helena Hutchinson's death, claiming others are. Baldwin's court filing claiming he intended to find out who is in charge of the guns on this movie and get him some shooting lessons, and that he trained with the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, around 90 minutes when he arrived on set. Alec Baldwin is saying he didn't do anything wrong, that he wasn't responsible, that he wasn't the one who was supposed to check the gun. And in fact, that he was told that he wasn't the one who was supposed to do that. The filing also claiming Reed did not instruct Baldwin to check the gun himself. In fact, she told Baldwin it was her job to check the gun, not his. Lawyers for the movie's armor, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, saying back in February that she was not called in to conduct a safety inspection and check with Baldwin. Baldwin's filing also lays out texts between him and Helena Hutchinson's husband talking about his exclusive interview on GMA. Someone is responsible for what happened, and I can't say who that is, but I know it's not me. It sounds like that really set Matt Hutchins off, because if you read Matt Hutchins' lawsuit, it is directly implicating Alec Baldwin in 15 safety and protocol violations. No ambiguity about it. And Matt Hutchins' team telling us the personal texts between the men are irrelevant to his arbitration demands and that Alec Baldwin once again is trying to avoid liability and accountability for his reckless actions before and on October 21st that resulted in the death of Helena Hutchins, as demonstrated by today's arbitration demand for indemnification from the Rust Production Company. 
Baldwin's claim also says the cast might be willing to return to finish the film as a tribute to Helena, but when her husband filed a wrongful death lawsuit, it kept the film from finishing. Matt's statement says, quote, the only action that ended the film's production was Baldwin's killing of Helena Hutchins. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, well, back here at home and really across the country, we are seeing record gas prices and the highest levels of inflation we've seen in 40 years. There's a lot of questions. How is this going to have an impact on your family across the country and across our community? And to help answer these questions, that is why tomorrow morning on Leading Essay at 8 a.m., a specialist with Victory Capital is joining us live. We're going to be discussing the topics of what led us to this situation. What do these numbers really mean for you and your family? And what could come next? So if you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. Then join us tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for all the answers. All right, the famous Texas beer, Shiner beer, and it is made in Shiner, Texas. Have you been? No, have you? Oh, it's fantastic. I went uh, earlier this year with one of our uh, fantastic oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, videographers, Asian Bermia. It's so cool. If you haven't been, you should go. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's in Shiner, Texas, and it almost ceased to exist in the 1920s, and it would have ceased to exist if it hadn't been for one woman. That's right. You're talking about Miss Seely, the daughter of Cosmo Spetzel, the creator of Shiner Beer, and didn't just keep the iconic Texas brewery alive, but also owned and ran it in the 1950s and the 1960s. So Sarah Costa visited the brewery to learn more about the incredible story for Women's History Month. The iconic Texas beer created at Spetzel Brewery since 1909 in Shiner, Texas, about an hour and a half east of San Antonio, was founded by Cosmos Spetzel. Even though Cosmos was the creator of the brew and set the tone of the importance of tradition and family at the brewery, it was his daughter, known as Miss Seely, who kept the Texas Shiner tradition strong. In the 1920s, Cosmos faced the hardships of prohibition. His wife also died. He felt defeated and decided to sell the brewery. But his then young daughter stepped in and convinced her father not to. She saw this brewery as her father. It was her father. And she did it for him, ultimately. She wanted to keep it going because it was him. Tyson Kopasinski with Shiner tells us Miss Seeley's story. She credits her for also saving the town of Shiner. Without the brewery, there's not a lot of places to go. So it definitely saved this town. When Cosmos died in 1950, Miss Seeley stepped in as the owner, where she ran the brewery until the late 1960s. During her time as owner, Shiner Premium was a flagship beer and Shiner Bach was only seasonal. The original Shiner beer, Shiner Premium, was created by Miss Seeley's father and it was also her favorite beer. It's pretty good. Everyone loved her. She was kind hearted. She had a heart of gold. She wasn't just beloved by the employees in the town, but she was also breaking down barriers as a woman owning and running a brewery, an anomaly then and even now. There's only less than 3% of craft breweries are solely owned by a female. Only 3% in the U.S. And at the time, she was the only one. Miss Seely died in 1977. Shiner has been owned by several people since. None of them have been a woman since Miss Seely. Tyson's advice for women who want to break into the brewery game like Miss Seely, don't ever give up. Set your mind with what you want to do and do it. And that's what she did. She just wanted to make this place run. She wanted to keep it alive. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Awesome story. Also very jealous she got to drink beer in the report. <laughs> It was just a little just bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Well, didn't you visit? Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you, I did you it for fun. It she did it for work. Oh, my goodness. I have to go. That's good. You can good. watch the whole story right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 941, 41 degrees out. Texas Eats giving us a look at some Ooh. authentic Mexican cuisine. That looks like breakfast of champions. I think so. Yeah, for us, it's like already lunch already. Yeah. We're ready for that. Basically dinner. All right. 41 degrees out there now. We started at 27. How high will we go? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. The steak and shrimp comes out 
bubbling hot. I mean, this thing is just screaming hot, has a nice little onion mixture that comes out on there as well, some hot peppers. So make sure when you get it, get some hot pepper, a little bit of shrimp, a little bit of steak all mixed together. Because if you just eat that pepper, it's gonna be real hot. Oh yeah. yeah. Give me some more love. <laughs> there you go. Steak and shrimp. One of the most classic combinations you can get out here. The paria plate, perfect to be shared. All the cocktails to have fun. But if you want something a little more authentic, mm -hmm. you have all different kinds of enchiladas yes. as well, right? So we have five or six different kinds of enchiladas. We have the Don Adolfo's enchiladas. We have the uh, uh, enchiladas verdes. Don Adolfo's enchiladas are, are, are prepared with fresh corn tortillas. Uh, they have chicken and they, have, they go over a, a white sauce prepared here fresh. Yes. I literally was like this the whole time because I can't even look at the delicious food because I'm so hungry. I so hungry. Oh, I... The steak and the shrimp. I was yeah. like, I need, need it. Looks great. I'm I... excited for that episode for sure. I am too. I have yogurt in the fridge, but I'm sure that doesn't help you right now. <laughs> yogurt Big win. is not the same as enchiladas. No, Stephanie. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we started by talking about how much we need the rain, right, guys? It's been a while since we've seen healthy rain. In fact, it's been 37 days since we've seen a quarter of an inch of rain in a 24 hour period in San Antonio and out west toward Del Rio even longer 129 days since they've seen a quarter of an inch of rain or more in a 24 hour period and that is very reflective in the drought monitor so drought is expanding eastward from the west you can see that Bear County is at least in moderate drought but there are areas of severe drought to the south and to the west and then this area of red here is extreme drought uh, across the Winter Garden region and extreme drought out toward Del Rio as well. 89% of the state of Texas is in drought. That is, we need some rain and it's March. It's a, it's a month where we often get some good rain, but that's just not in the forecast this week. 0% chance for rain in San Antonio over the next seven days. And out to the east across the coastal plain, there could be a couple of showers, but those areas are, are doing okay when it comes to the drought conditions. Hey, if we can't get rain, at least the weather's gonna be nice, right? And so we are, do have tons of sunshine here at the airport. It's still chilly, it's still in the 30s, but to Temperatures are rising as we speak, and it's going to be a sunny but cool day today. It's 42 in Yavaldi, 41 in Del Rio, 36 in Kerrville, 41 in New Braunfels, 39 in Austin, 45 in Gatula. And although this is chilly, this is a vast improvement on where we were right at sunrise. We were at 27 degrees in San Antonio this morning for the low. Much of us experienced a freeze, and that is the latest freeze we've seen in San Antonio since 2006. Don't put those plants out just yet because we do anticipate one more freeze early tomorrow morning. Today's forecast, though, calls for total sunshine and temperatures in the upper 50s this afternoon. So, yes, cool but comfortable. Light and variable winds, and it is going to get cold tonight. As soon as the sun sets at 641, temperatures are going to fall. Don't be caught without a jacket tonight. You'll regret it if you don't have a jacket and if you have Saturday night plans. Let's talk for a second about sunset. 641. But guess what? Daylight saving time begins tonight. And so by tomorrow morning, the sunrise will be at 745 rather than at 647 like it was this morning. So an hour later sunrise and you guessed it, an hour later sunset too. So the sun's going to set tonight at 640 and tomorrow it'll set at 740. So uh, at least it'll look a little bit more uh, like spring with that later sunset. Uh, but yeah, we lose an hour of sleep, so that kind of stinks. Okay, on the dew point, uh, you can see that the dew point is very, very low, very dry. Dew points are in the teens and even in the single digits in some places. This is about as dry as it gets around San Antonio. And so you'll need the hand lotion, the uh, chapstick and static electricity is going to be high today and with dry air we cool down and we warm up really quickly uh, that's a meteorological fact for you and so tonight we're going to cool down very very quickly in fact tomorrow morning we're going to be having a morning freeze we'll be near 30 degrees around san antonio much of us experience a freeze with 
perhaps the exception of Del Rio and Eagle Pass out to the uh, west. But with abundant sunshine and low humidity, we're going to warm up nicely tomorrow. Tomorrow's high temperatures call for a high in the upper 60s and even in the 70s out to the west. It's going to be even warmer on Monday when we get a high temperature of 80 degrees. So we go from 27 this morning to 80 on Monday. Breezy tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday. Yes, there's a cold front there on the, the seven day map, but it is a weak cold front, really just keeping things dry for us, keeping humidity low. Highs this week in the 70s and 80s. You know, I kind of feel bad for the kids that were on spring break last week because it <laughs> felt a lot like winter several of those days. And this week, you know, spring break is going to be awesome for those on spring break this week. Yeah, I mean, we still got time off. It's OK. That's good stuff. Yeah, your daughter was off this week. Yeah, right? she, she had fun. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 950, 41 degrees out. Let's take a look back outside with Trans Guys. Beautiful out there. Yeah, it's looking nice right now. Highway 90 at Loop 410. So, yeah, if you're wrapping up your spring break, I mean, you can still enjoy it this weekend with these afternoon temperatures. <laughs> right now, it's kind of cold. All right, we have the latest on Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson, the latest from the grand jury. We're going to have that coming up next. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Big news out of the courts yesterday. Texans Deshaun Watson will not face any criminal charges. A Houston grand jury deciding not to indict the Texans quarterback. 22 lawsuits filed against Watson, accusing him of sexual assault. And in those, 10 women filed criminal charges. But after six hours of presenting evidence, the grand jury voted not to indict. Now, Watson, who has already been give, begun given Two different depositions in the civil lawsuits. He has been waiting for this day to come for a long time. I think everyone that was a part of this of seeing and hearing both sides, um, and, and that's what my point and, and my team wanted to do is, is have a fair slate of us telling our side of the story um, and, and, and letting the conclusion come down to what happened today. It is still far from over. He has multiple civil lawsuits he has to go through. But on the other pro team here in Texas, Dallas Cowboys, they have a salary cap issue. And they're trying to get rid of some of that salary cap. They just released tight end Blake Jarwin and kicker Greg Zerloin. Remember, tore his ACL in 2020. Now Jarwin has been able to work his way back to the playing roster in 21. Zerloin has been with the Cowboys since 2020, but by releasing him, the Cowboys save about $2.5 million, and by releasing Jarwin, they save about $6 million. And of course, we've been talking about it through the morning, but I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up one more time. Congratulations, Coach Pop. Yes, congrats, Coach All time Pop. most winning NBA coach. Stephanie Cerna was there to witness it. Very emotional. Yes, it was. Time now, 9.55, 41 degrees out. And frozen meals are super convenient, especially if you're trying to feed the family quickly after school. So tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to go over some of the most popular frozen foods that dietitians say you should avoid. For allergens in today's pollen count, mold, juniper, elm, and oak, but they are all low. Temperatures already rising into the 40s after a morning in the 20s, so we're going to quickly see temperatures rise even more into the upper 50s near 60 degrees. Sunny and cool today. Another freeze tomorrow morning, so uh, keep those plants covered or brought inside for one more night. 66 degrees for the high temperature tomorrow, so a nice afternoon tomorrow uh, for us. All in all, a fairly nice and sunny weekend. We're going to be even warmer on Monday. We'll be near 80 degrees. A weak cool front moves through Tuesday morning. That keeps our temperatures in the 70s and 80s, but at least keeps the humidity low too. So a beautiful week ahead for those enjoying spring break. Just no rain and it's starting mm, to show out there. Not yet, but All yeah, right. at least it'll be nice. It will. Just got to get through freezing and the time change. So <laughs> yes, Time change tonight, Forget. but uh, spring break, you guys just had it, and you celebrated with the Spurs game last night. Yes, we're very excited. Uh, so, you know, for spring break, we went to the Spurs game on Wednesday and on Friday, so we're glad to see uh, history in the making. Yeah. So we told our little girl, hey, you're watching history right now. No. Super cool. So, and you had great videos, emotional moments, David Robinson, DeJounte. I feel very lucky. You guys have a beautiful weekend. <laughs>
I got big hands. This is a really great sized burger. It's messy, it's good, and this is the bite. And we're traveling to Canyon Lake for a taste of classic Italian cuisine. In Italy, we don't cut up the fish. It's always a whole fish. Plus, we find out how a popular food truck is making their one-of-a-kind lobster rolls. They're going home. They're making all these rolls. They're baking them fresh every day when they come out to the truck. All that and more today on Texas Eats. First stop on today's show is at a burger joint on the northwest side of San Antonio for some ice cold shiner. We're traveling around the Lone Star State on a mission to pair ice cold shiner beer with amazing food. And that's why we're on the north side of San Antonio to go inside a Big's Burger Joint. Let's go check it out. Joining me now is Alexander Stanley. He is the co-owner out here. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming out. And right in front of us, we have some different items on the menu, some of your top burgers and some hot dogs. Oh, yeah. And then we have a selection of Shiner beer as well. Now, how long has the restaurant been here? We opened in August 2006. Oh, wow. So about 16 years almost. Yeah. yeah. This one right here, though, is like the guy, right? This is the burger. This was once the 21st best burger in Texas, according to Texas Monthly. What? <laughs> this is the Chalupa Burger. So this is our half pound patty. It is uh, Angus beef, 80-20. Comes with a tostada shell with homemade refried beans, homemade pico de gallo, and shredded cheddar cheese underneath the patty on top of that bun. Look at this thing. I got big hands. This is a really great sized burger. It's messy, it's good, and this is the bite. Oh, wow. The Chalupa Burger is so flavorful. The pico de gallo that's on there, the cheese, the beans, that little tostada shell that's on there as well as that crunch you want. Toasted on the top and the bottom on the buns. Half pound patty, cooked to your likeness. It is so good. This is like, it's like Tex-Mex, it's burgers. It's like if you can get San Antonio and this whole part of Texas and put it into a burger, this is it right here. Absolutely, we've been, we've been perfecting that here since 2006, but prior to that, my mom was making those in the kitchen at home. And so the recipe, has had many years of practice. <laughs> this is a barnyard chicken sandwich. So it's got our eight ounce chicken breast on there. It's got some smoked applewood bacon. Has a sunny side up egg with some pepper jack cheese. Y'all know how to cook some eggs. Here we go, watch this, there we go. That's like ooey gooey eggy heaven right there. We call it making it dirty for a dollar. <laughs> It gets a little on your hands and Alexander, on your face, <laughs> but uh, it only costs a dollar. <laughs> there you go. The barnyard chicken sandwich, that's the bite. The barnyard chicken sandwich is delicious. Tender chicken on there, cheese. This one has the egg in there. It's called getting it dirty. You can get it for a dollar. You get a fried egg put on any one of the sandwiches. So right when you bite into it, the egg just is runny. It combines with everything that's in there as well. Kind of adds like a second sauce. This is a phenomenal chicken sandwich. And y'all are not playing around. I mean, it's not called Biggs for no reason, right? Well, that's, that's the name and we're sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take another bite of this one. This is a great sandwich. Now, if you want to go crazy, not only do you just have a double that's just a one pound burger, you have a triple pound and a half burger. Well, so that is three of our half pound patties. Comes with cheddar cheese, and we have an over easy egg on this one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a surprise attack right there from the egg. That was cool. If you're looking for a big cheeseburger, it's in the name out here, Biggs. You gotta get the pound and a half. It's three patties. It is incredible. You can get them cooked however you like. Add the cheese on there for a dollar extra. You throw the egg on there as well. That runny egg into the burger meat with the cheese on the double toasted buns, it is delicious. And you gotta wash it down with an ice cold shiner. Now you got burgers, chicken sandwiches, hot dogs, side items, but you gotta wash it down with something ice cold and refreshing. And that's why we have all these different shiners here in front of us. Now, what does shiner mean to you? What does this relationship mean to you? Well, Mr. Alvarez uh, and his family have been coming here for years. He, he's a great friend of my mom. Uh, they eat here once a week on Friday nights. They love the burgers, we love their beer. 
It, it's a match made in heaven. I'm going for the OG right here. A little bit of Shiner Bach. Which one are you going right. to reach for? I am a fan of the sea salt and lime. There you myself. go. Okay. You know. Mix it up. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Ice cold Shiner and burgers, sandwiches. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. But now you got hot dogs. Well, so my mom, born in Chicago, had to bring a Chicago dog on the menu. <laughs> so you've got your mustard, onions, uh, sweet green relish, sport peppers, pickle, tomato, and a little bit of celery salt on top. You guys, Biggs out here off 1604. I mean, what a fantastic place to have here in Texas, in San Antonio. It's chicken sandwiches, burgers, big burgers. It's Biggs and Chicago dogs. Cheers to you, sir. Thank Cheers. you so much for having us out here. Thank you for coming. Now we're here in downtown San Antonio to go inside the newest barbecue joint in the Alamo City. Let's go inside Pinkerton's Barbecue. Joining me now is Grant Pinkerton. He's the owner and pit master out here at Pinkerton's Barbecue. This is the new location here in San Antonio, but this is not your first rodeo. I mean, you've been doing this for a hot second there in Houston. Yeah. So talk to me about why barbecue is important to you. Well, one of the reasons why I love barbecue so much is it's a great way to bring people together. Um, you know, it's a, it's, we do all communal style seating here normally, and we believe that um, Anybody can come together and agree on some stuff over a good tray of barbecue. There you go. And I wouldn't say this is good. This is great. <laughs> just the way it smells in here. You got the, the pits off to the side, so the smoke is just outside. It's kind of creeping around. That's why there's a huge line outside. It's just attracting everybody. But, I mean, you've been through a lot. Uh, a lot of restaurants have, especially in 2020. But uh, you've come out of it. We, we survived the crazy snowstorm uh, right. of 2021. And you're here. You're doing it. But before all this even happened, uh, what was the first thing you, you barbecued? What's the first thing you smoked? And were you really excited when you did it? Did you know that's something you wanted to do? Yeah, so one of the first things I smoked, I asked my dad for a barbecue grill when I was 12 years old. And the first piece of meat I smoked on there was a brisket. And I always tell people, I said, the first one turned out great and the next 50 turned out terrible. <laughs> you know, because you got the first one and so I was hooked. And then after that, I decided to start tweaking things and inevitably messed it up. And then. Finally went back to just keeping it simple, salt, pepper, and great beef. That's the bite right here. Like meat butter. Wow. So much love and attention is put into every single item that's out here on the menu. The briskets, the ribs, the dino beef ribs, I mean everything. The sausages are their own recipes that are made off location, but the briskets, Creekstone, it's a really high quality meat, Black Angus prime meat, and it's all put on there, salt pepper blend, and he's using his own little blend too, like a little bit of different kinds of pepper, different kinds of salt, so it makes it really unique. And it's just such a quintessential Texas barbecue flavor, but they're just doing something that much better that you won't find anywhere else. The chicken wings, the pork ribs, the brisket, everything's on point, but this is the big daddy right here. Oh yeah. This is the one that people will drive miles and miles for. They want to come find the big old dino beef rib. Right. What's going on here? How you doing it? Uh, it oh my gosh. It looks like it's ready to fall off the bone. It's ready to go. So this is another Creekstone product that we cook here. This is a giant beef ribs. We have them every day. And uh, one of my personal favorites, I always say it's like, it's the, the barbecue side dish. Because when you come with four guys, you can all, you can buy one, you can all split it. I'm gonna give it a bite. Money. If you're a carnivore, like a hardcore carnivore, the dino beef ribs where it's at. What is this right here? All right, this is one of our signature cocktails. Probably sell more of these than anything else. This is our ranch water, uh, lime, topo, candied jalapenos, and you can buy them by the bucket. Wow, that is fantastic. A way you can tell that this place is from Houston, a little bit of that Cajun influence, a little bit of that Louisiana influence, right? So you got some boudin on the menu, and you got that jambalaya on the menu as well, a little bit of duck in there. And that comes from Grant's background in hunting. He's incorporating all those different flavors, his passions, into his food. Grant Pinkerton is a Texas native, and his family's been here since the early settlers of the Lone Star State. The house pictured here is the Pinkerton family home that was built in the late 1800s by George B. Culver. The house is still owned by the family today. 
did your dad do this? Did your grandfather do this? Is this something in your family that you just took on or you just started learning and doing it? I started learning when I was young. I, when I was about nine, I had a real passion and uh, curiosity for cooking and especially meat and live fire. I kind of started doing a lot of grilling. And like I said earlier, when I got to be 12, I wanted to extend that grilling process. And I knew the way to do that was, well, I'll smoke a brisket and then I can sit there and play with fire for 12 hours. Um, so that's kind of how I got into it. In high school, I was at Ag and FFA. I played football, uh, started building my own barbecue pits. Um, and then I went to the University of Texas at Austin and watched the barbecue boom happen there and moved back to Houston and uh, started going on a little trailer and um, built my business up through social media. What was it like when you saw that you were mentioned as one of the best barbecue joints in Texas? Uh, you know, it's hard to make grown men cry, but I don't know if I was a grown man yet, <laughs> but I definitely shed some tears. You know, that was a really great moment in my life because it kind of justified the hard work that I had put in um, with the recognition, you know, I lived above the restaurant in Houston for three years. It's a 24-hour deal for me, and to, to see that your name in the paper like that, it was it was a really special moment. The side items make the barbecue joint. It's the cheesy jalapeno rice, the mac and cheese, has a little bit of rosemary in it, which is really good as well. You could also add brisket or pork, whatever you want on there. And then you can also get the potato salad. Just a really standard, delicious potato salad. One of the coolest things when you come out to Pinkerton's Barbecue here in San Antonio, even the Houston location, is they're going to have an extensive whiskey and bourbon collection. I mean, just check this out. A couple of these bottles that are out here are a thousand, close to $2,000 a bottle, but there's also some that are more approachable as well. So it's a whole array of liquor that you can get when you're out here. But when you're all done eating and you have a little bit more room, you jump into dessert. You have that's what, we, that's what we got right here. What's going on with this? All right, so this is our smoked bread pudding. Uh, <laughs> this is a, Come on. my favorite dessert. I mean, it is crazy. It's got a blueberry reduction on it. It's got smoked cream cheese. Yeah. Let it rip. That's the bite right there. I said it's like a piece, it's like a, a piece of amazing French toast. <laughs> Just walk off right <laughs> Take it all of it with me. This is wild. It almost has like a an angel food cake kind of vibe to it. It's just so soft and delicate. Very moist. Very moist. And then that cream cheese on top, the icing that's on there. I mean, this is dangerous, man. It is. I'll tell you what, Graham. Um, your barbecue is phenomenal. Thank There's you. a reason why you get so many awards doing what you're doing. The sausage to the dino beef ribs, the brisket, I mean, you can't go wrong. Even the chicken wings, a little different, but they're going to blow your mind. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thanks for coming out. You guys, Pinkerton's Barbecue, it's open. Ironically, it's over here uh, when you exit Houston. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, from Houston, there you go. Uh, but this is the place to come to. This is the new spot to try. Uh, downtown now has just a really amazing barbecue joint that we can be really proud of out here in San Antonio. I think this is great, man. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for coming by. Texas Eats will be right back.